Good morning, Facebook friends, family. Welcome to Gathering the Eagles, and uh, welcome all the Eagles uh, this morning. Praise God. We pray that you had a great weekend this last this last weekend and uh, and uh, Monday, and we are going to have an amazing morning this morning. God is pouring out His Spirit and uh using uh you know using just uh, just willing vessels and uh and uh, and ones that he has trained up through the uh through the years of uh testing and uh training and honing and uh, and I, and they become special uh gems to the body of Christ that uh they're able to shine for the body for Christ and to be able to really bring uh, uh you know how we're supposed to you know do church how we're how we're supposed to do uh ministry prophetic ministry apostolic ministry and uh, and win the lost and be a light to the nations and and I have one of those uh with us today I'm really excited to have a really good uh, friend of mine uh, uh well, I'm getting to know and uh he's he's just an amazing man of God fellow eagle and we uh we we are uh, flying today we're going to be we're going to be praying for you guys as well uh so we're going to be trying to see visions for you guys get things from the lord for you guys so it's going to be exciting please tag share and uh, try to get the uh, program out to as many people as possible praise god and because this one is, you do not want to miss it is going to be fantastic i have a, an amazing guest uh pastor wayne nelson i call him you know i i put the title in the title uh, apostle wayne because he uh, he is an apostle. He is he's a pastor. He's a prophet, and uh, he's just he's just an amazing man of God. For the time we get to uh, sh uh, speak with him, um, so many things are just like everything he said is just exactly what the Lord has shown me and what the Lord has shown me. Um, like it's just been confirmed, and uh, and he is he's he's bringing uh, uh, an apostolic heavenly vision today, um, and he's going to share what's happening also on the East Coast. This is a uh, Revival on the east coast of Canada, and I believe it's a blueprint for what God wants to do in the nation of Canada, in the United States, around the nations. Amen. So, uh, without further ado, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for being here. I want to welcome my guest, Pastor Wayne Nelson. Praise God from <laughs> Eagle Mountain Church. Praise God. Amen. So good to see you, uh, brother. Hey, it's good to be here. Yeah. Hello to, every, hello to everyone out there. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, we yeah we want to welcome everybody uh, coming in, tuning in, and uh, guys, uh, put in the comments where you're tuning in from. Uh, please tag, please share it out, and uh, we we want to uh, we want to bless as many people as we can today. So, uh, Pastor, we God bless you. Uh, so good to see you, brother. Uh, so we uh, we were talking a little bit in the back and uh, in last I think it was last week or mm -hmm. or was it two weeks ago? I think it's like a week or two weeks ago. So yeah, much has happened. Like but yeah. uh but yeah so um uh, the uh, the name of the church is eagle mountain yep. and uh and that really that really struck a chord with me as soon as i heard that because i don't know how many years ago it was maybe 10 years ago maybe eight years ago something like that the lord took me up into heaven and uh, he said marty i want to show you i want to take you to eagle mountain i didn't even know there was an eagle mountain uh -huh. and <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, we're going to Eagle. So we flew, he took us, we flew to Eagle Mountain. We we went, not right at the top, but there's a ledge kind of close to the top, and we stopped there. And uh, he started talking to me about Eagle Mountain. Uh, and uh, he told me that Eagle Mountain was the highest, the tallest mountain in heaven. Wow. That, that's what he told me. And uh, cool. and uh, and so he told me a lot about that, how God is raising up the eagles. <clears throat> God is bringing people uh uh to eagle mountain to uh to uh, uh train them to be eagles and uh in here your church is is named eagle mountain so I, as soon as i heard that man i was like okay i gotta get i gotta get to know this guy wayne man <laughs> it's so good and then and then all the stories I, I i started hearing your testimony on youtube and uh mm -hmm. looking at you guys you, you got to hear that uh, testimony youtube follow on youtube and uh just amazing uh, uh life testimony life story um uh, for people that don't know you wayne um, can you share maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, how you got saved? Because I think it's such an yeah. impactful, powerful testimony to, to be shared as much as possible. It's so, it's so amazing. Sure. Well, um, it all started uh, with my mom when she got born again, just a few months after I was, after I was born. And then fast forward at four years old, I started, I started, that's the earliest recollection I have of seeing in the spirit realm. And I was actually seeing demons and I was talking with them. They'd come to my room, they'd visit me and I'd, I'd talk to them. And it was understood that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't tell anybody or they couldn't come. 
And so I didn't tell anybody. And so this went on until by 29 years old, I was full blown possessed. I had surrendered my life to Satan. I was uh, oh, wow. <clears throat> yeah. addicted and violent, demonized. And then, and then I got to the point where I had a, a life crisis and um, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. And so I went to a party with some friends of mine and uh I blacked out and I was trying to kill someone that night. And so my, my buddies tackled me, wouldn't let me do it. When I was heading home, I crashed. I, uh, I uh, passed out of the wheel of my truck and something invisible grabbed my head and yarded it up. And, and I seen a power pole coming and I just missed it. Next morning, I wake up in my bedroom and I'm, I'm heading out of my bedroom. I just step into the living room and something invisible again hit me, sucker punched me so hard on top of the head that I fell to my knees. And when I fell to my knees, this, this, this great big uh, screen popped up in the middle of my living room floating. <clears throat> and my life started going uh, fast forward on the screen. It was like it just kept going, but no sound. But I could feel the emotions of who I was as, as this young boy, <clears throat> this innocent young boy. It's like the whole thing was about about uh, the emotions of who I was and until it, it, I went from this innocent boy to this crazed fellow who was on his knees in the living room and then the screen just dissipated and i knew that what people were telling me was true that like people were trying to tell me wayne you got to settle down you gotta you know you got some addiction issues you got to look at and i thought they were the problem if they just shut up i'd be fine <laughs> but then all of a sudden i got a clue it's like i was totally aware of what was going on and so i went to an aa group and the first aa group i go to i didn't say a thing just by the time i left i felt a little better and so I thought, well, I'll try it again. And so I, uh, I went a second time. And this time, the the, the group guys leading the group, um, he said, you know, you can make it. You need to receive a higher power, and you can make this light bulb or this chair your higher power. And every bit of hope I had for this this place drained out of me. I thought, man, I'm dealing with demons. There's no light bulb or power, chair that's going to help me. And so I went home to take my life. And God wow. has wow. God has a sense of humor. Friday the thirteenth is the day that I went. I go home Friday the 13th and I, I, I got my gun and I'm ready to get out of here. And I, my brother, who was a wild man, he became a Christian a couple years prior or three years prior about that. And I seen him go from this crazy guy to a great designated driver. So I thought, well, maybe I'll give him a call. So I call him up at midnight and I say, what happened to you when you became a Christian? And he said, why? I said, well, I've been trying for about an hour and God won't have me. And, uh, and so he's, he says, he says, well, no, he's trying to convince me God will have me, and I'm trying to convince him he won't because he doesn't know who I am. And and anyway, um, long story short, he says, do you want to give your life to Jesus? And I said, I thought, what do I got to lose? So I said, sure, I'll try. And he says, well, repeat this after me. I thought, repeat this after you? you mean I got to say this out loud? He says, yeah, you do. And so as soon as I as soon as I go to repeat what he's saying, something invisible in my kitchen grabbed my throat so hard I couldn't talk. It was squeezing like. I could feel a wow. physical squeeze in my neck, and, and I'm wondering what the heck is going on. Come and then, on. And, a and big then demon. I thought, what the heck is going on here? And so I, in my mind, I thought, I don't know what this is. And then this voice just screamed in my head, pride. And I thought, pride? What do I got to be proud of? And so everything in me, I forced those words out, and nothing happened. And I said, I knew it. Didn't work. He won't have me. And so he's trying to convince me it's done, and I'm trying to convince him it's not. I would know. And so he says his short <laughs> prayers. He says, he says, God, show Wayne that you're there listening. I said, that one didn't work either. And so he hung up the phone, and we hung up the phone instantly. This, I know him now to be the Holy Spirit. Then I had no language for it. Yeah, but yeah. It came yeah. right through my entire body, and I knew that I knew. I had this knowing, this understanding, I'm about to meet God. And I'm standing in my kitchen in my house by myself, and I'm going, how does anybody meet God? That is, like, how do you do that, you know? And so I thought, well, I better clean up. So I went to the bathroom and I combed my hair. I brushed my teeth. I put on underarm deodorant, washed my face. And I said, that's the best I can do. So I went around <laughs> into my bedroom. I'm lying on my bed. And I said, okay, God, if you're real, help. And this massive hand came through the ceiling, like huge hand, just came right through my ceiling and rested on my torso, like the length of my torso. And I could wow. feel it really pushing me on the bed. And when I looked down at the hand, Jesus was standing right in the doorway. And, and I looked over at him and uh, in shock, and he just walked over and gently touched my, my left leg with his finger. And the moment that he did, something inside of me went ballistic. That hand turned into a vacuum. 
and I could feel this. It felt like snakes slithering all out of my body. And and I looked down at my chest, and these black demons came right out my chest. I seen them come right out my chest, and they hovered there for a moment, and they, then they went across the room and out the window. And I leapt oh, off. Man. I leapt off my bed. I ran to the window because you got to understand these things terrorized me my entire life. Yeah, one, they've been with you since a kid. And one touch from I'm Jesus, they left in terror. <laughs> and so I wanted to find out where they were going. And so I, I, I ran to the window to see where they were going, and they were just gone. I looked back, and, the, and Jesus was no longer there, but I felt his presence. And it was, it was that's what I was searching for in the addictions, just that peace. I call it liquid peace. I was standing in liquid peace. Yeah. And uh, and I said out loud, I said, God, if you can do this for me, I want to find out who you are. Yeah. And uh, I've been on a journey of discovering who God is every single day since. And every single day, he's better and better and better. <laughs> so that's the short and so so today, guys, I'm telling you, it's going to be it's going to be rocket fuel. Uh, power today for you guys watching. I'll tell you because because uh, the power of the Holy Spirit is uh, is with with Wayne. He's uh, he's a man of God. Now, how long you, how long ago was that, uh, Wayne? How many years ago was that? That was thirty one years ago. Thirty one years ago. Wow. Yeah. Thirty one years ago. Uh, it'll be thirty two this fall. Thirty two this fall. Yeah. Wow. So th that's absolutely incredible. And so you've been on this journey. You you uh, you were radical, kind of. Uh, you know, you're you know before you're a big guy, strong guy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, no, nobody kind of messes messes with that guy, guy kind of guy. <laughs> and, <laughs> and 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 now you got, now you got saved. The devils are out. You got the peace. You got the Holy Ghost. And so so what got you? What uh, obviously you started going to? Did you start going to church right Maybe. away or? Yeah. I mean, I went to a, a Mennonite Brethren Church at the beginning because okay. I, I yeah. did not want anything to do with the spirit, nothing, because I could, I, I was dealing with the wrong spirit my entire life, and I had no clue what the Holy Spirit was like, and I didn't want to get messed up. My mom, she was, she was so excited because she thought I'm going to jump into this, and and she used to have prayer meetings and speaking in tongues and all this stuff and i just thought it was the weirdest thing in the world so this I, is obviously an answer to prayer to your to your mom's prayers she prayed me right. into the kingdom oh for no sure. doubt about it same with my parents i i, yeah. I give them the credit too no yeah. doubt about it yeah no yeah. doubt about it and, uh, so that's awesome too guys come she on she was actually prayer walking with another lady who um was the founder of the church that i'm pastoring right now and so wow. my mom and this other lady prayer walked until this church came into being and now i'm pastoring it come on <laughs> you cannot make this stuff up like that is unbelievably powerful yeah yeah wayne i mean that, that, we that's me so we so you went to this you went to this uh plymouth brethren brethren church yeah and yeah. the people there were so beautiful i absolutely loved them and it yeah. was there was there was no manifestations of the holy spirit or anything like that and, and honestly i couldn't have taken it i'd have left and and so I just got grounded in the word. It was the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. And so I, I found out the love of people and the love of the word. And then and then shortly after that, it wasn't that long after, uh, God said, okay, now now you can go to uh, another church. And so I went to this other church that was the Holy Spirit was flying, and I was ready for it. I got and then uh, and then I my mom actually you know I blame my mom because she she suckered me. Um, <laughs> Uh, she's 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 saying, well, why don't you come just once to my church? And I says, well, why don't you come once to mine? And so she did. If I would go to once to hers, and so I ended up going to this home group. I didn't go to the church. I went to this home group, and I'm in this room with about thirty people, and they're all singing and dancing, and they're happy. And I'm like, what the heck is this? Because you know, it's all just quiet, you know. And, no, and I'm like, this is kind of interesting. And and I'm thinking, well, but she really tricked me. She picked me up. I I had no way to leave. <laughs> so, that's a smart mom right there <laughs> yeah and so i'm thinking that's i gotta all, get out all. of here i gotta get out of here and i can't get out of here and, and so they uh they they had this hot seat they call it a hot seat they put a chair in the middle and they said okay who needs prayer and my oh. mom went right at me and she says he needs prayer he's been having headaches and seriously i was having massive headaches for for years and i was i didn't know they were that bad for you i was taking 10 to 12 tylenol a day just to numb it right oh and my goodness grace wow. of god he, he let me through it but anyway so they sit me down in this chair and they pray for the headaches and then they get then the the, the pastor says uh oh, would you like to get baptized in the holy spirit and i said no already done thanks <laughs> i had no idea what it was right <laughs> no i'm good 
And, and he goes, he says, well, when did you get it? I says, well, I got it when I was born, when I was born again. I got the full meal deal. He goes, no, this is different. He's trying to tell me, you need the evidence of speaking in tongues. And as soon as he said that, man, I'm like, get me out of here. Just get me out of here right now. And, that was a trigger. That but, was a trigger. But I'm surrounded. <laughs> I'm surrounded by the people, right? And so there's no way to leave. And so in my heart, I'm going, God, protect me from these people. <laughs> and so they prayed anyway. And then I got up and I'm mad. I, I like I'm trying to be happy, but I'm mad. And and then we finally leave, and it's my mom. I can't be mad at my mom. I love her, right? And so and so she's wasn't that great. And I'm like, well, yeah, it was great, you know. And and then all of a sudden I realized I didn't have a headache. Come on, brother. What the heck? I don't have a headache. And it tripped me because it, it tripped the switch. I didn't know what to do because it was real. I I I had no headache, it was gone. And so I think it was a day or two later, I'm at home and I'm sitting in my chair. And I said, okay, God, you know, I open up my Bible. I'm in Corinthians and it's talking about tongues. And I'm like, oh my goodness, there it is again. It's in the Bible. What do I do? And, and as I'm looking in the Bible, I went, oh my goodness, I'm going to be faced with this until I'm not faced with this. And so I said, God, I realized that I'm, I'm actually afraid. I'm afraid of what's going on in the spirit because I don't understand it. Yeah. And so I said, I'll make you a deal, God. If it's from you, I'll take it. If it's not from you, keep it from me. That's the only thing I can say. I'm going to trust you in this. And yep. something invisible again smacked me so hard on top of the head. I physically hurt, and I it it made me grasp gasp this great big gasp of air, and I sucked this big thing of air in my lungs, and then I couldn't let it out, and another one, and I couldn't let it out, and the third one, it felt like my chest was going to pop, and then after the third one, it just whoof out it comes, and I I shouted, "It's you, it's you," and then whack, I get hit again. And the same thing happens. Three great big breaths of air, but this time, instead of just blowing out air, all of a sudden, tongues come out of me so fast and hard that I couldn't stop it if I tried. Come <laughs> on, brother. <laughs> then I started going in my head, what the heck is this? What's going on here? And I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll test this because you can't. I, I'm thinking that I, you know, some might be some psychological thing happening. Thought, <laughs> yes. You can't. Still not totally convinced. No, oh, no. Still not. <laughs> I want to know that I was deceived a long time, man. Yeah, and so, man. Yeah. That's so why I'm like, I got to make sure. And so I started doing math problems in my head to see if I could still be talking in tongues and sure enough. And so I've been settled on it ever since. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is awesome. What a testimony. Yeah. What a testimony. And, and uh, so obviously that's just that, that got you, uh, that literally you became like a Holy Ghoster since then. <laughs> like the Holy Ghost is real. The, the word of God is real. The gifts are real. There was a problem though. Yes. I got, in, I got in the way. Right. Right. And because God was originally, he was, he was showing me like a minimum of three visions a day. And I was seeing, and I was learning stuff. I remember one vision I, and, and I didn't understand stuff, right? It's, I'm brand new at all this stuff. I didn't understand it. And I yeah. see this golden ark. I didn't know it to be the ark of the covenant because I didn't know it. And it had two angels on it and it's on a platform. It's got these posts and it's coming out of heaven and purple lightning is shooting underneath it. And so I tell someone this vision and they open up the scriptures and they show me in the, in the Bible, it's the ark of the covenant. And so God was using visions to teach me. And then the more I told the visions that I was seeing, the more kind of people started looking at me funny. And so I slowly stopped sharing what god was sharing with me and when i slowly stopped sharing what god was sharing with me the vision slowly stopped right right, right and, and so right, right, right. after a while I, I ended up having to try to figure it out on my own and then the series wow. of things happened and the next thing you know i'm i'm i, I slid back into religion i sl well not back into i slid into religion and i yeah. started following god out of my own works and i i got tired and burnt out and i didn't know what the heck to do and and finally, one day, I'm, I'm frustrated because the situation happened. And I said, God, you know, if you're going to have me doing this stuff, you got to let me know if, if this stuff is going to go on. And he said, Wayne, you're a foolish Galatian. Whew. Whoa. And I dropped to my knees because it was like the conviction of the Holy Spirit hit me. I was a foolish Galatian. I started, Having begun in the spirit, are you now made per perfect in the flesh? Who has <laughs> bewitched you, right? And, wow. Wow. You see, when God speaks, he doesn't have to kind of, you don't have to have a conversation with him, try to figure out what he's talking about. His, his <laughs> voice comes with the full revelation of what he's saying. Yeah. And the full revelation, on, me, oh my goodness, how did this happen? 
So I dropped everything. I did a stop, drop, and roll, man. Come on. <laughs> I, I was on wrong fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's called, yeah, it's called, it's called being tested. What there's, there's, a, there's two fires. There's the real fire of the Holy Ghost and there's a strange fire. And we yeah. all get tested. I call we'll it heaven fire or hell fire. fire. <laughs> I was yeah. on hellfire. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The one leads to hellfire. Exactly. <laughs> oh, come on, brother. Wow. So got, what, what, a, what a revelation. I got back into heaven fire. Yep, and started listening to the Holy Spirit, and 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 you know it was just God knows exactly who to put around you to. He put the right people around me at the right time to pull awesome. me out of that darkness and bring me back into the light because I I didn't even realize it, but I'd slipped in and I was serving God from the spirit of the world, and people can do that, you know. Yep. There's a spirit of God and there's a spirit of the world. Galatians, uh, pardon me, First uh, Corinthians one or two twelve says that you received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that you might yeah. know the things that God has really given you. And so right. I was trying so hard to figure it out because I was trying to figure it out from the spirit of the world. And right. I was James, surprised. James three. Also, there's a, there's a wisdom from above and yep. a wisdom from below. James also says, you know, a double minded person is unstable in all their ways. Mm -hmm. You're either in the mind of Christ or the mind of the world. And, and you can try to serve God from the mind of the world. That's what awesome. I was doing. But when I repented, which means change your mind, I jumped back into the spirit of God and all of a sudden the revelation started coming again. It wasn't me trying to figure it out. It was the, me and Papa are having conversations and he's revealing Christ in me. And the more he reveals Christ in me, the more excited I get. <laughs> right. Right. So, so uh, they that humble themselves under the mighty hand of God, yeah, God will lift them up in due time. And, uh, and God gives grace to the humble. Yeah. So that's, that's always, that's always the, the way. Yeah, stay humble and you'll keep getting grace. <laughs> yeah, I'm really kidding, and, amen. So, wait, and that's what happened to you. So, you so, but, but that's a good test, eh? Like, that's a good thing to teach from mm -hmm. teach people that because a lot of people are going through that right now. Uh, what which way you're going to go? Are you going to go in the flesh? You're going to go with dead re with man's religion? With uh, you know, it looks good in the flesh, it's carnal, yeah. we got all it's got all the trappings, but nobody's getting into the Holy Ghost. And the fire of God's not falling, and people people are actually aren't getting saved, healed, and delivered, and set free from sin and yeah. from the power of Satan, and being built up into the image of Christ to do the works of Christ. It's two totally different results, yeah. and so there's a test that a lot of us are going through right now. Yeah, one one that you got to figure it out, and one that it's revealed to you. Yes, right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. The Lord said to me, Matthew 16 is a foundation for where where I'm taking you. And that was when Jesus said to the disciples, who do you, who do the people say I am? And then they, they list off a bunch. And he says, yeah, but who do you say I am? And Peter goes, you're the Christ. And Jesus' response changed my life. He said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. You didn't learn it from your mom, your dad. You didn't learn it from your pastor. You didn't learn it from anybody else, but you learned it from my father. father. My father revealed in you who I am. Right. That's the only way that you could you could come up to this conclusion. And because you came to that conclusion based on my father revealing him, revealing me to you, this is how I'm going to build my church. I'm going to build my church by people receiving the revelation from father who father. Jesus is. Let's go. Let's <laughs> and go. the gates of hell will not prevail against that church. And so that it's, it's it has come to on be somebody. Familiar. It has to be by revelation. You can you can study the word and you can understand the word and you can figure it out, but that word can start wars. But when the word is revealed to you, when it's revealed to you by the Father, who Jesus is, it'll 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 change your life completely. Yeah. So, yeah. Second Second Corinthians chapter three verse six. Mm -hmm. Verse six, I believe it. Verse verse six or verse seven. The this the spirit gives the letter kills. Yep. But the spirit gives life. So you can even preach and do Christianity out of the New Testament. Yep. But if it's not by the Holy Ghost, it's not yeah. by the spirit and the ministration leading and the power of the Holy Spirit, it's mm -hmm. gonna kill you. Yeah. It's gonna kill the church. Yeah. So this is a this is a big deal. So Wayne, so you you got so uh, we were talking about this, like uh like what God is doing out there. Like so you you uh, is is uh, is really a blueprint. And uh, but how did you get there? Like uh, just to share maybe a little bit more of your testimony, uh, because it's so good. Like like we could literally do two two hours, three hours. Just your like we could probably do ten hours of just your testimony, and like everyone will be glued to it. But uh, but just uh, in kind of a nutshell, how did then how did you get into the ministry? 
Well, it was it was really quite interesting because the people around me seen that there was a there was a call in my life, right? And and I didn't understand the call. I was just I was just happy to be alive and happy that, that I found this brand new life. I remember I remember I remember when, when I got born again. I was going, oh, no wonder they go to church. <laughs> I thought that's. <laughs> I would say like, everybody had that, right? And I'm like, wow, that's why everybody's in church. And so I go, I go into church and I found out there's a whole pile of different ones. And so there's a different way of seeing things. And I'm like trying to scratch my head and walk through this new world. And it was it was interesting. And so I ended up uh, in the church that I am now. Um, we start, it, it opened up 30 years ago um, it, in March last month. Yeah, you guys uh, just celebrated your 30th year anniversary. Celebrated our 30th, yeah. And the Incredible. very first... You know, I just, I was a, I was a commercial fisherman at the time. I came home from herring fishing and it opened, we had their very first service that evening and it was so cool. I, I got to be at the first service. And so after going wow. through this, the people seen that I, that I, there was a call in my life. And so they, they, uh, they said, well, how would you like to uh, be a children's pastor? And I laughed inside. I said, holy smokes, man. You know, I got to share this, man. It was so cool because I didn't understand it. I couldn't figure it out that night that I got born again instantly i quit swearing like not a, a prior to that as a fisherman man every third word coming out of my mouth was a foul thing and then and it was just a lifestyle and and, and then all of a sudden not a not a swear word would come out of me and i couldn't figure that out it was just like and, and all my friends are going like who the heck are you like you don't even sound the same i remember when i when i it's when literally I, a different language a uh, vocabulary yeah i was like different vocabulary Seriously. I was part of this group, right? And and every Tuesday night we'd meet. We had our own bar and everything. And every Tuesday night was our meeting night. And, and so, um, I I when I got born again, I I hid away from everybody for I think two three weeks. Can't remember. It was three weeks, I think. I just hid away, and all I did is read the Bible. I read through the Bible. Just I took three weeks and just because I I was off fishing, I was I wasn't fishing, so I just took the time and I just went through the whole Bible because I thought I got to know this thing. And right so. On. And then afterwards, uh, this one Tuesday night, I decided, okay, I got to go back out and meet the guys. And so I show up at nine o'clock, bars open, I walk in the door and there's 19 guys sitting around the table and they're all looking at me. They're just like, it just went dead silent as I walked in the door and they're, they're, they're staring at me and it got really awkward. You know, that awkward silence. Uh -huh. and I went, what? <laughs> and somebody says, what happened to you? I says, what do you mean? What happened to me? Cause I didn't, they didn't, they didn't know. Right. I just disappeared. And they're like, right. what happened to you? And they, they, I, 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 what are you talking about? He said, well, you don't look so dark. Like my countenance changed. Oh, yeah. Come on, said, you don't look so dark. And I was like, <clears throat> well, I thought I could probably tell them one by one or I'll just tell them all at once what happened. So I just went through the whole story of what happened to me. And they sat there with their jaws on the table. And at no the end kidding. of it, yeah, at the end of it, they went, oh, man, somebody go get Wayne's guns. He's flipped. He's flipped. And so they're, they're serious. They're getting up. Then they're headed to my house to go and grab all my guns. And, and I'm like, hey, guys, it's it's I haven't flipped. I'm the most safest person I've, it, that I've ever been right now because they knew that I could get crazy. And so they thought I they thought I tripped out. <laughs> so they were going to protect the world from Wayne. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's this darkness, the light thing happened. And then, so then they asked me to be a children's pastor and I'm thinking, Holy smokes. I don't know if they know who they're asking. Like, and, and, and I, I said to him, I, you know, I didn't have the language. So I just said, I'll think about it. You know, I didn't say I'll pray about it. I said, I'll think about it. And so I went home and I thought, well, if it works, it's gotta be God. If it doesn't work, that's just me. And I can back out. Like that's, that's my way of testing. If it works, it's God. If it don't work, it was Wayne. That's no big deal. Right. The next Sunday I go to church awesome. and every single kid in the church came running up to me. It was just like, they, like they seriously, they were around, they were circled me and they're all like, hi, Wayne, hi, Wayne. And I'm like, what the heck? Maybe this will work. And so it was God. And so he started training me by helping train children. Yeah. And so I became a children's pastor and I did that for nine years. And, awesome. Uh, wow. And wow. 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 I learned, I learned the anointing teaching children Come um on, brother. there was this whole system that we had up in place and then there was a, a point in the um a point in the children's service where it was time to preach and i would take a 10 minute period and i would just preach to them and i would feel the anointing come and i'm like holy smokes what's this this is god and all you know we had rules and things set up so that the kids would be settled because you know they they're, they're kids right 
<laughs> as, soon as, as soon as the anointing came, <clears throat> didn't need any rules. All the kids were glued. And I started realizing mm. they're experiencing the presence of the Lord too. And yeah. they were so attentive. And so when I would get excited in the anointing and I'd start acting like Wayne, I could feel it lift. And it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it was, it was, it was like I heard uh, Bill Johnson once say that the, having the Holy Spirit on you like a dove, coming down like a dove, you walk different. Right? Yes, yes, yes. So I, I could feel it happen. It was like, oh, all of a sudden I'd, I'd begin to be different. I'd, I'd be truly who I am in the anointing. And then the kids, it was amazing. And so I actually, some of the some of the men that are and, and ladies that are in my church were people that I pastored as children. <laughs> How cool is that? How cool? Yeah. <laughs> and so it's sort, and then in that, I I started realizing, you know what? I don't want the youth to go through what I went through, yes. trying to figure this out on their own. Exactly. And yeah, so along you, with brother. children's you... pastoring, yeah. Along yeah. with children's pastoring, I tagged on youth pastoring as well, and I became the youth pastor. And then eventually, someone else took over the children, and I I was working with the youth. and And so there was a, a group of about fifty youth that would hang around the Seven Eleven and and right outside where my church is now. And uh, and and they were getting in fights. Nights were coming out, and so I walked into the middle of it and says, "Hey, man, what are you guys doing here? Like on a Friday night? What are you doing here?" And they would go, "Oh, there's nothing else to do." I says, well, what would you like to do? They said, well, we'd play floor hockey. So I thought, okay. So I went and rented a gym. And uh, and on Friday night from 7 till 10 o'clock, I opened it up for floor hockey. I'd do an hour and a half of floor hockey and get them wore right out so that they're all sweaty and need to sit down and take a break. And then I'd preach the gospel to them for 15 minutes. And then we'd Come go back in, back in the on. floor hockey. And, 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 <laughs> and in, in, that in four is years, awesome. That is so years, awesome, you guys. In four years, about 200 kids surrendered their life to the Lord. Come on. Come on. <laughs> wow. Praise the hockey. Lord. Yeah, they just needed to get that energy out so they could sit down long enough to hear the gospel. To hear the gospel. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, what a testimony. I'll and tell now you. Some of those, some, of those ones God, man. some of those ones that were in the floor hockey are now calling me up asking me to officiate their weddings. It's really kind of cool. That is, you can't beat that. Yeah. You can't beat that, man. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Yes. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, see, you know, th that's why I said, like, um, I've just, I'm just heard, uh, like, I've heard parts of your testimony, but I know we could be here for 10 hours just listening to, to your testimony, mm -hmm. like, how all the awesome things. And I can even see, like, a movie, like, being made out of, out of your testimony. Like, there's so many incredible things like, that the movie would just be a hit. Um, because, you know, so, you know, because it's so powerful what God did through, in and through your life. I like That's sharing about amazing. what God did, you know, but yeah. there was a whole pile of years there where it was demonic. Like yeah. it was, it was not far. It was, you know, I, I, I didn't even ask for it. I get pulled out of my body and, and, and like it was normal to me, but it, it wasn't normal, but I knew it was, I knew it was happening. Right. And, uh, and if any Christians, and I, I want to say this because sometimes Christians get a little nervous about sharing the, uh, God bless you, Darren Canny. Hey, Darren. <laughs> another, another mighty bald eagle. Let's go, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if a Christian would come up to me and start sharing the gospel with me, yeah, and I listened, then later on that evening, I would have to pay for it by what the, the demonic realm would, those demons, there, sometimes there'd be so many in my room that I, I couldn't even count them. And they would, it would, and you know, you know what the presence of the <clears throat> Lord is like. When the presence of evil comes, there is a fear that is that is unrealistic. It, you, yeah. Like I wasn't a fearful person about anything, but I would experience fear sometimes to the point of exhaustion because I would be paying back for having to listen to a, a listen to Christians. And so wow. if a Christian came up to me, I would be very vocally violent at them to shut up, except my mom. <laughs> wow. Because because you'd pay for it. I would pay for it later. Pay for it. But, Isn't that something? Eh? How how the devil's a bully. The yeah. devil is a bully, man. And, and so it was like there there would be a a very aggressive Wayne saying, "Shut up! I don't want to hear what you have to say." But it wasn't because I didn't want to be free. I wanted to be free, right. but I didn't want to. I didn't want payback, and I had right. no idea. Look, I had no look at idea. that, you guys! Wow, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I had no idea the power of Christ. To me, I to me, I thought that there's no way that God would have me because I wasn't good enough, 
and and I had I had no idea. And so I thought, if there's no way that God's going to have me, and here's here's how I I'll share with you how I surrendered my life to Satan. My son, um, he was about five years old, four or five years old, and he came downstairs and he said, "Dad, there's a rock floating in my room." And I said, "What?" Because it was around four years old that it started happening to me. I thought, what the heck? And so I said, show me. So we went upstairs, and there's a rock sitting right in the middle of his floor. He says, that one was floating in the middle of the room. And I went, oh, no, no. Not. Inside, I'm, I'm like, oh, no, how do I protect my kids? Like, how, I can't even protect myself from these things, right? And so, right. and so they went to town, and I went into a rage in my house, and I called up, I called up the devil. I says, you get up here. I want to talk to you. And he manifested in my living room. And I'm face wow. to face with him. And I said, okay, I'll make you a deal. I'll follow you to the grave if you leave my family alone. And and I the see he's a seether. That's the only way I can have. He's got this seething look about him. And he and it was like this quick little nod and off he went. And then from that day, my life just power dived into addiction and everything else. It was just like, uh, and he's a liar, right? And so right. when Jesus, when Jesus touched me and, and the, those demons left. One touch from Jesus broke the covenant with hell. Come right. on, brother. Let's right? go. <laughs> One touch from Jesus and the covenant of hell was broken. And 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 I and that's why I'm just like I'm awestruck. And awestruck. every single day God gets better. But then he yeah. starts to teach you about the things of the kingdom and how you're supposed to to navigate it, you know? Because yep. every one of us, when we're born exactly. again, we've got to learn how to navigate. Yep. How do you navigate this kingdom when you don't even understand what the heck it is? Yeah, well, that's, where, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. <laughs> that's where the Holy Ghost comes, in. and that's where good, good apostles, prophets, pastors, mm -hmm. you know, teachers, evangelists, those you know, men of God, elders, yeah. you yeah. know, that have been through it, come in, yeah. come in real handy. <laughs> and having Papa reveal to you Christ. Exactly, exactly. Because every one of us is going to be faced with it. Every one of us, you know, as soon as as soon as you begin to serve the Lord, as soon as you begin to serve the Lord, and I heard it said this way, as soon as you get in the game, once you're in the game, then then you become a target to the enemy. He doesn't want you in there. And there's people out right. there right now, and I want to speak to the ones who are who are who have went through hell and they don't know why. And in their head, they're kind of thinking that there's something wrong with them. I want to tell you, it's not because there's something wrong with you. You're going through it because there's something so amazing about you. And there's a gift and a call of God in your life. And the devil is so terrified that you'll understand why you're here. The devil is so terrified that you'll you'll get a hold of, of the, the revelation of Christ. And the next thing you know, his kingdom is coming down. And so... He puts so much at you, at you, at you, trying to get discourage you and make you think that there's something wrong with you. No, there's nothing wrong with you. You're created in God's image. You're created in God's likeness. And in the image yeah, of God, I mean, the question I ask people, is God awesome? And, and of course he is. Well, you're created in the image and likeness of awesome. So what does that make you? The devil wants to make you think that you're a worm, that there's nothing valuable about you, that your life doesn't matter. And God says, no, no. Your life matters. I've created you in my image and likeness, and I've put my spirit within Come you. On, brother. There's so much good that you're going to do, and that good is going to destroy the kingdom of darkness. And the kingdom of darkness understands this. So the moment you put your foot in the game, they want it out. And so all this chaos comes at you. But all you have to do is keep saying yes to God. You, the, the blueprint of the kingdom is yes, God. <laughs> yes. <That's it. laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Shot yes, kaboom. Like, we need the want? altar call right now. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, God. <laughs> Let's get <Wow>. it done. <laughs> uh, so yeah. good. So good. Um, I feel the fire of God. I feel the fire of God, the presence <laughs> of the Lord. And uh, and I just pray everybody that's watching this that you feel the presence and the fire of God. And if you are, just say, just put in a fire emoji. Yeah. Praise God. Let us know you guys are feeling the fire of God. Uh, so good. And so, so, uh, so there's been so many things that have happened um, in, because uh, you became the pastor of the church there. Because so you went from youth pastor to, uh, to a pastor. And, um, and you guys, you guys have a vision. You're telling me that you're telling me last week, I think it was last week or the week before, uh, that you guys have a, a, a vision or mission to, to save, see 10,000 souls come into the kingdom. Sons yeah, of God. Daughters One day the Lord said, it was a promise that he gave me. He says, I'm going to give you 10,000 souls in the city. 
Come on. And 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 I went, whoa, ten thousand. And I, and and of course, you know, as soon as you as soon as you put a number on it, somebody's going to come up and say a higher number. Why ten thousand? Why not twenty? Well, because God said ten thousand. You know, yeah. <laughs> God says ten thousand. That's what we're going for. He didn't say twenty. He said ten. And I know that it's ten thousand people that in this city are going to be born again. And and so one day the Lord said to me, "How are you going to know unless you unless you count them?" And I thought, well, counting is, is we allowed to count? And he said, well, 3,000 got born again the day of Pentecost. That's a count. And I went, okay. So we started counting. Yeah, that's Since right. Since March of 2019, there's been over 450 people have surrendered their life to the Lord. Wow. And Just say that Say that one more time because I think, I think some some of us missed that. So so he said, um, since Mar the March part? Yeah, the March part. Okay, since March of 2019, there's been over 450 people born again. Come on. But Come God, on. God does this, these things. I call him Jehovah Sneaky sometimes because he, he just, he sometimes sneaks things in. And uh, in the early, uh, around 2010-ish, somewhere in there, 2010, 2012, somewhere in there, um, our church was in, we renovated a, an old nightclub, a bar. And uh, it was actually the second bar, and, and it was a bar that I used to have my own table at. Anyway, now <laughs> I'm preaching. <laughs> right. And so, so uh, cool. we're in this place, and it had a furnace. And one Sunday morning, we go in there, and the furnace backfires. And it smells like that really gross sooty smell. Yeah. And so we opened up all the doors and windows and tried to air it out the best we could before people got there. But it stunk. And so the, the following Tuesday, the following Tuesday, we're having a uh, Tuesday morning prayer. And I go in there a little bit late. And all of a sudden, um, it, it still smells like that rotten smell. And, and there's 20 people around there praying and nobody smelled it, but I did. And I was like, can you guys go pray in another room? I'm going to open up the doors and windows. So I open up the doors and, uh, and all the stuff to air it out again. And right outside our emergency door was the Greyhound bus station. And when that door was open, I'm watching, and about a hundred and some people walked by there within an hour. And I'm like, oh my goodness, there's a harvest there. And so, wow. <laughs> and they're, they're coming right to our door. And so, we, on. we put a sign out there that said free food and free drinks. And you can come sit and wait in the warm instead of sitting on these hard benches outside in the cold. And so, people started coming in. And once they came in, it was game on for ministry. And in two, two and a half years, 1,200 people surrendered their life to the Lord. Come before, on, brother. Before they got on their bus, right? Come and on, 1,200 people? From over 50 nations. We were we were recording their testimonies and all this stuff. Um, I remember one, there was a Wiccan, a, a witch came in there, and she's walking around going, oh, wow, what a beautiful aura in here. I says, yeah, we call him Holy Spirit. And then she goes, oh, yeah. I says, you want to find out about Jesus? And her face kind of contorts, and no, I don't want to know about Jesus, and said, well, you look like you're in pain. She said, yeah, I got hit by a car two years ago. I've been on painkillers ever since. So, well, can we pray for you? Yeah, I'll take prayer. And God instantly heals her, like instantly. And she's, right now, she's going, what? Fire How'd you, God. How'd you do that? How'd you do that? I said, well, that's, that's Jesus. You want to find out about Jesus? Yes, tell me about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Shakarama <laughs> Sandaraboko. <laughs> and so, wow. That, that, that is awesome. You see, the, a lot of times people are, they want the power of God, but why do you want it? Do you want it for me or do right. you want it for we? They're, right, they're not, right. That's, it that's has beautiful. to go to we. It can't be for me. It has to be for we. Yeah, that, amen. You know, that the, the spirit of God would begin to flow through us so that other people would get touched. And incredible miracles happened during that time from blind eyes would open. I, one miracle was, like the miracle of salvation to, to me is the best one, but but you yeah. cannot discount the miracles for the physical healing and, and the deliverances that happened. And there was this uh, exactly. Hell's Angel fellow, he came in, he he just spent 20 years in prison. And uh, they'd, let him out, they'd let him out of our, the prison that's in our town, they'd let him out with a bus ticket, go wherever they needed to go. And so that's right outside our door. <laughs> and so this little, little lady... She's walking in the one door, and this biker's walking in the other door, and he's tattooed from neck to toes. And and she's she says that she's going in the other door. She goes, "Oh Lord, send somebody to help him." And next, you know, they're face to face, right? And she's like, "Oh," and she's looking up to this big guy, and she goes, "She goes, hey, can I tell you about Jesus?" And this guy gets a little annoyed at her and says, "No, I'm not interested in Jesus. I just spent 20 years in jail for murder." And she says, "I've read every version of the Bible. I've read the Quran. I don't want any of that garbage." 
And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit drops on her. And when the Holy Spirit drops on her, this boldness hit her, and she goes, what? Not interested? How could you not be interested? God who created the world and everything in it, and he sent his son to die for you and fill you with the Holy Spirit, you say you're not interested? And this guy falls back on his heels, and he starts freaking out. He's going, what did you do to me? What did you do to me? And he runs out of the church outside. <laughs> he comes back in, and he goes, what did you do to me? I've never had emotions before. Why have I got these emotions? What's going on with me? And she goes, that's Jesus. You want to find out about Jesus? And he surrenders his life to the Lord right there and starts to weep. And he says, this is what he says to her. He says, I was given another assignment when I was in jail. He says, I can't go back to that world. Walks over the altar, and kneels down at the altar and begins to weep. You know, one touch from Jesus. I know what it means to have one touch from Jesus. Me too. You know, we cannot discount one touch from Jesus because I got one touch on my leg, man. And my life has never been the same. I got delivered to demons, everything. And it, it just one touch. You cannot. Yeah. Discount it. And you carry, whoever's listening to this, you carry the anointing of God. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. But the spirit of God works through belief. And, you know, yeah. you have to believe him. If the word of God says it, that settles it. And, and yeah, there's come on. the word of God says it, says it, that settles it. And, you know, you were talking about humility and pride. You know, yeah. the Lord yeah. took me to, on a gives journey, grace to the humble. You know, to the humble. Numbers chapter 12, verse 3 says that Moses was the most humble man on earth. Yeah. When I read that, I went, wait a minute. Who wrote that? <laughs> Moses wrote that. <laughs> thinking, How could Moses write in the world's number one bestseller that he's humble? Could you the imagine? most humble man on the planet. Yeah, could you imagine <laughs> the Marty, if, if, if the heading on here was Marty is the most humble man, you know? You yeah, know? Oh, oh, I get stoned to death. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that? And Moses does it in the number one bestseller. So I said, well, then I don't understand humility. And he takes me and he takes me on a journey of discovering yeah. Moses' life. And he shows up at the burning bush at 80 years old. The most pride-filled person on the planet. He was so filled with pride. He, he was raised 40 years, 40 years in the church of Egypt by a, by a warlock, you know, yeah. surrounded by witchcraft, surrounded by sorcery, surrounded by occult. And he was raised the first 40 years in that. And then he goes to, he goes to defend his people and he has to run. The next 40 years he spent in a desert <clears throat> learning how to shepherd sheep. <laughs> when he was called by God, he, in the first 40 years, he learned the art of war. He learned the art of, of literature. He wrote the first five books of the Bible. And he learned the art of the arts. He, he's the one instructed to, to arrange the tabernacle. The next yeah. 40 years, he spends in the wilderness learning how to shepherd sheep. And when he finally does come into his, his calling, he's now equipped to shepherd Israel, <laughs> to, to teach them warfare, to, to um, teach them the word of God. Yeah. And to show him how to worship God in, in the beauty of his holiness, so yep, to speak. Yep, yep. But when he shows up at the burning bush, he's the most humble man. Pardon me. He's the most um, pride-filled man on the planet. And God says to him, go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And his response to God is, you don't know who you're asking. I can't do that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. God in says natural, to every one that, of them, go lay In the natural, that would have been actually just a death sentence probably for him. Absolutely. Yeah, but yeah, in the yeah. spirit, God yeah. says to each one of us, he says, go lay hands on the sick. And people go, you don't know who you're asking. Right. <laughs> go and love the hell out of people. You don't know who you're asking. Right. And so yep. Moses shows up and this little tiny, so match, good. this little tiny matchstick in the desert. And you see, you have to understand that the, uh, the God of that time in Egypt was Ra, and Ra was the sun. Okay. And in that time period, like our time period, people are going, is there a God? In his time period, it was like, whichever God has the most power, that's the one you serve. Yeah. And they were serving Ra through sorcery and witchcraft. And Ra right. was the sun. And this tiny little flame in the desert says, go and tell the sun to let my, my people go. And Moses is looking at this going, you're a little matchstick. And you want me to go tell the sun to let my people go? I don't think so. I'm not going and God's anger flares up, and so he ends up going. And, yeah. and catch this. When, when he stands before Pharaoh, because um, I used I watched, I, I don't know if you watched Charlton Heston movie. The yeah, yeah for sure. 
And and so I always thought it was Moses that threw his staff down. It wasn't. It was Aaron. Right. Aaron right. threw his staff down because Moses was throwing his brother under the bus. Real man of God, right? You know, because right. if Pharaoh gets mad, who's he going to get mad at? You know, he's going to get mad at the one who threw their staff down. And all <laughs> of the witchcraft, all of the witchcraft in the world, That's because funny. their staff represented the power. <laughs> right. Exactly. It yeah. all ended up in Aaron's rod. And whose rod, and whose rod ended up in the Ark of the Covenant? Aaron's Aaron's, rod. Yeah, yeah, all the witchcraft, all the yeah. witchcraft, right? And so yeah. he goes through this process. The next one, the water turns to blood. Aaron's staff, the, the frogs come out of the Nile. Aaron's staff, the dust turns to lice. Aaron's staff, and then all of a sudden, when the dust turns to life, the, the, the warlocks and the witches looked at him and said, we can't do this. This must be his God. And Moses goes, what? How could the matchstick do something that the sun couldn't do? And from there on end, you're going to find it's Mount Moses' staff because all of a sudden... That was his turning point where he went from pride to humility. Pride exalting my circumstances and my opinions above the word of God. Yeah, humility yeah. exalting the word of God above my opinions and my circumstances. Yeah, and so come on. Humility. <laughs> and, and a faith to faith. Yeah. A faith to faith, glory to glory. <laughs> it exalts the humble but brings low the proud. Yep, exactly. Right? Because exactly. that's a person believes, so they are in the world. And so Moses, Amen. Moses was able to write that he was the most humble man in the in the planet because he was obeying God. Ex exactly. And, and you humility. know what? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure he got that from God too. Absolutely. Like so, he's just saying what God said. Yeah. Like which is what men of God do. So and and people that don't understand or know God, they don't understand how how a man can say some of the things they do about themselves without looking like they're full of pride. But it's, yeah. but it's but it's because they don't know God yet, and they yeah. haven't been through that process. And it's like, no, no, you say what God says. It doesn't matter what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. So when I went into when I went oh, into that so place good. of religion where God said, Wayne, you're a foolish Galatian, I was so full of pride, yeah, that I was brought low. Yeah, yeah. Come <laughs> and on. and those who humble themselves, oh man, great things Woo. can happen. And the humility, is simply believing God. Amen. In everything. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Whoo, shaka. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and I believe right now, like there's people that are, that are watching and they're like, you know what? I'm humbling myself even more, uh, even as I, even as I'm expecting to see God do good things in my life and to be able to actually serve God, I'm humbling myself even more. And mm -hmm. the grace of God is beginning to flow in this broadcast right now. Yeah. Ooh. So if God Thank says, Lord. I want to release 10,000 souls in, in my city, who am I to argue with them? Right. Right. It's so good. it's not me. There's no argument. <laughs> I just have a yes. If you want to, you want to see the kingdom of God ex expand around you, just say yes to whatever. Yeah. And be free to make mistakes. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's uh, because you're gonna make mistakes. <laughs> I've made more than my share. <laughs> yeah. And there's a difference between going out and and trying to do something that is wrong to God or to somebody mm -hmm. and sinning. Yeah. And uh, as opposed to just making a mistake, yeah. so there's 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 grace for mistakes and uh, there's mercy for for sin if you repent. Yeah. So yeah. So so there's all that kind of process we got that uh, we got to make sure that we deal with. But the grace of God is there for us to be able to walk holy, and to be able to walk walk in the Holy Spirit, yeah. and uh, to do what we've been predestined to do and to become. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite scripture verses uh, last month here, Pastor Wayne, is is Romans chapter eight verse twenty nine, yeah. and that says we before the creation of the world we've been predestinated to be conformed into the image of the Son of God, yeah. who is who who is yeah so so that is uh, that's really encouraging to know that uh, we we have a destiny that uh, that you have a destiny and that uh, that you're part of that you're, you you are part of that destiny the Lord said that everybody's included in that destiny. But you have to be holy in, you know, mm -hmm. so you're included, you're part of it, yep. you're, you're called to be in it, but you got to be, you got to now wholly step into it. Yep. And, uh, and that's the yes, uh, uh, Pastor, when you, you're talking about the blueprint. Yes. Yeah. Yes is the blueprint. <laughs> that, the blueprint is so much simpler than we thought, than I thought. You know, maybe I'll share that that vision of the blueprint. Yeah, share that, share that, share that to, because um because I think people need to hear hear that vision. Like you had so many visions, but this one I really I love this one. Yeah, if if you can take take a minute to share that, uh, guys, you're gonna love this. So I I was uh, um 
prophesied over many times that that the Lord was going to give me the blueprint for the city. And of course, I want the blueprint because I, you know, you want 10,000 souls to be born again. I need to know what the heck I'm doing. Well, <laughs> he just lets you know little by little. It's this, this is the walk of faith. You just do your part and then he does his part. And you do your part. He does his part and it grows and it grows and it grows. And so I, I, one day he took me into a vision where I'm, I'm actually standing in this vision and the Lord is uh, at this table and he's at the right side of the table and his back's to me and he's unfolding something that I can't see. But in my heart, I know it's the blueprint. It's the blueprint. I'm finally going to get the blueprint to know what the heck I'm doing. And and he he unfolds this thing, and then he goes like this with it, and this tablecloth just gently lays down right perfectly over the table, and the tablecloth was like a beautiful whitey pearl color. It was royal, mm. and it had these swirling designs in it that were blue. It was all blue, and it was all around the, the edges and stuff like that. And the Lord turns around, and he looks at me, and he says, Wayne, I'm just inviting you to my table. So here I am looking for the blueprints to get to work. <laughs> and he turns around and says, kick your work boots off, put your slippers on, and just come to my table. You have a place at my table. Let's hang out. And I was just blown away, like, oh, my goodness. Yes, 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 by grace. It's it's not not by works, but but yeah. faith and works together. And and so come to my table. You, I don't want to tell it. Somebody needs to hear this. You have a place at the Lord's table. Okay, he's made a place for you. Come on. So the next day, I'm pondering this vision, and I go back into it. And when I go back into it, that 3D design comes. Uh, pardon me, that that design comes 3D right off of the right off of the tablecloth comes up, and it's just floating above the table. And now he's given me eagle eyes in the vision, and I and I go in and I look, and that that blue swirling design was DNA strands, blue DNA. And what is what is DNA? It's the building blocks of a body. It's how the body is formed together. And the body of Christ is formed together by coming to the Lord's table. Come it's on. not that hard. You know, it's so full of revelation <laughs> that uh, that that uh, we should just do a program on that. But <laughs> it's yeah. a, but it's so but I love it. You saw DNA. Yeah. You saw you he showed you DNA. DNA. And and you know, the old covenant was a covenant where I had to bring a sacrifice to God. I had to work for it. The new covenant, God brought a sacrifice for me. Yeah. Which is the better sacrifice? The one I can give him or the one that he gave for me? Yeah, exactly. And so that is, that is coming to the table, accepting the sacrifice that Jesus did. That I, don't, I, I did nothing to work for this invitation. I did nothing to work to get into it. I received a kingdom. I didn't work for it. Because right. you can't afford one drop of the blood of Christ. You can't. That's right. That's right. That's it, right. It, it's freely given. And yep. Yeah, there's so much more in that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As the, uh, we've been saved by the washing and regeneration of the Holy Spirit, by the, by the mercy of God and the washing and the regeneration of the Holy Spirit yeah. in Titus chapter 2. That's t t sorry, that's Titus chapter 3, I think it is. Titus chapter 3. And, uh, and then it says, so be careful to maintain good works. So we're, we're saved by his mercy, what we couldn't do by his sacrifice, his blood, his life and his sacrifice on the cross for yeah. us. He became, he who knew no sin became sin for us yeah. that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And so therefore let us be careful to maintain good works. Let's not go back to sin. Let's yeah. not go back to selfishness, doing our own things, rebelling against God, yeah. right? Be, re receiving the grace of God in vain, mercy of God in vain. And so that's what we're encouraging us to do today is to receive that mercy, receive that washing of the blood. That, that The only thing that can take away the sin off your life is the blood, blood of Christ. Yeah. So you need to be set free from, from sin. You need to be washed by the blood. And then you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. To, to be able to become the sons of God that you're called to be. And, uh, what you know, one thing, uh, Pastor Wayne, that is really amazing is, uh, is you know, we talk a lot about eagles and Eagle Mountain Eagles. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is, there's this progression. You know, what we, what we mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, says that we're, uh, we're, we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. And we're, we're, uh, we, we behold the glory of God as in a glass being changed into that same image, even by the spirit yeah. of the Lord. And so we, so there's a progression. And, uh, so there's also needs to be like a demonstration of the glory yeah. through, through the body of Christ. Yeah. 
and uh, to to continue that progression and uh, to be changed into you know, the image of the Son of God, to Im- the image of the Son of God, which we're predestinated to be. So that's what leadership is about. Yeah. That's what leadership is about to to demonstrate that to to help them to be able to come up to that as well. And uh, you do that you do that so well. And uh, but that's also part of what you know the ego ministry, yeah. and uh, the ego ministry is is uh, being able to see those things from heaven for people that haven't seen those things yet. Yep. and seeing things that happen for themselves and that's called uh, f- feeding the sheep feeding the eagles and uh and so so w- what are some maybe some of the things uh or maybe one even one thing on uh, what you would maybe want to share about uh, the eagles on, on on this broadcast if there's if there's anything that comes to mind yeah eagles Start are on your heart eagles represent the prophets you know yeah or, amen, the, or, the, or the prophetic realm okay bob yes. jones prophesies when the kansas city chiefs Win the Super Bowl, there's going to be the beginning of a revival. The Chiefs represent the apostles. Right. Okay. Right. And and, and the the Eagles represent the prophets. Right. right. And so what, what what he was prophesying is when the apostles come into their authority, <laughs> when they when they win the game, when they come into their authority and they take they take ownership of the you see, you have to understand that the kingdom of heaven is already won. It's done. Yeah. God's already, he's declared it from the end to the beginning. It's, it's already done. And so when the prophets begin to take their place, when the evangelists begin to take their place, when the pastors and the teachers begin to take their place, that fivefold ministry to equip the saints to right. do all of this. Right. You see, Jesus was an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. He was all of right. them. Yeah. Totally. And he says, I want you to become like me. Totally. And so the apostle will, will train and equip the congregation to do the work of an apostle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, the prophet absolutely. will change change people to do the work in the prophetic realm, to be able to see the eyes to see. You know, I've 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 been up to heaven numerous times, and I haven't tried to get there. I just been pulled out, and I was pulled out because it was it was the Lord's desire. And when I went up into heaven, He showed me things. Paul writes in his in the scriptures. He says that the 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 gospel I'm giving you was not from human origin. In other words, right. he went up as, <laughs> as if the apostle Paul went up and he, he was seeing in the spirit realm and he was hearing and learning what the gospel was from the spirit. You're meant to do the right. same thing because Jesus, <laughs> he was carried up into heaven and Paul writes, follow me as I, as I follow Christ. When I, when I read, when he said that, follow me as I follow Christ, follow I Christ. said, well, Paul, you went to the third heaven before you died. You were you actually taken up into these places where, of the spirit so that you could bring back from the glory realm what was supposed to be on earth. And if you look at Moses, the prophet, where did he go? He walked up Mount Sinai, and I won't get into the, all the, the teaching of it, but it's really cool. He walks up Mount Sinai, but he enters Mount Zion. <laughs> Yeah. And when he's in yes. Mount Zion, oh man, get, oh my goodness, <laughs> when he's in Mount yeah, Zion, they, they went up, literally sat and ate in heavenly places. Yes, in Zion, and he was shown the tabernacle. He's seen. That's what the prophets do. That's what the prophetic realm does. You've seen. He's seen the 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 temple that he was the tabernacle that he was supposed to bring on earth, and so he's up in the spirit realm, and then he comes back to earth, and he begins to declare what he's seen in heaven, and all of the provision comes into. To administer what he what he had seen in heaven, but it had to be declared on earth. Once it was declared on earth, the provision came in for it. And many of the things that you need in your life, you've been you need to go into that into the spirit realm and see what it is that God wants you to do. Because Jesus said, "I only do what I see my Father do," and He's my example. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. I, it, right. you know, unless you're born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. But if I am born again, I can see the kingdom of heaven. And so the first step is you have to believe that God wants to take you into these places so you can see what your assignment is. And if you see your yes. assignment and you begin to declare it. And so I started declaring, well, if Paul can go to heaven, so can I. Guess what? I've been there numerous times now. And, and, and it's not my will. It's his will that, that brings me into that place. And he shows me things. And then Because you've seen it in the word and, the, and faith comes from hearing, hearing by yeah. the word of God. And then yeah. when you activate that faith, you find that it works. Yep. And you're here, to, and that's what you're testifying today on the program. And it's amazing. You're meant to see, and so the, the, meant to the see. prophets come on, but they're meant to awaken you in a sense. They're, they're not God, but they're meant to awaken you. They're sent by God. Yeah. And in right. that in that sending, 
you're meant to be able to to take a hold of the faith that says, well, if they can do it, I can do it. And so Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. And I would say to you, follow me as I follow Christ. Don't don't follow Wayne's ideas, but follow me. If you see something that's in Scripture and and I'm following it, then if it's a promise in there for Paul, it's a promise in there for me. And Jesus wants... Mm-hmm. Wayne, Pastor Wayne, he also said he also said the things that you you see in me, do, and God will be with you. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Here, here's, here's, <laughs> that's true here's, leadership, by the way, too, right? Like, uh, uh, without hypocrisy. Here's a trippy yeah. one, John twenty twenty one. And if you catch the heart of John twenty twenty one, it'll change your life. Peace I give you, as the Father sent me, I send you. Okay, come on, brother. So he said this to me, and 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 um. He gave me five mandates, and the five mandates quickly. Number one is he says, I want you to teach people to live undistracted, undistracted from him, his presence. Where's God right now? He's with us. He'll never leave us. Emmanuel, God with me. I promise you I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But it's so easy for us to check out from the fact that the presence of God is here, and we can go through our day and and not be aware of his presence. Number two, it, number two, he says, I want you to teach the people to stop treating me like I'm an event. Like salvation is an event, like it's not an event. He is salvation. He is healing. He is deliverance. And he was very firm on this. He said, revival's coming. Don't treat revival as an event. I am revival. And so without the awareness of his presence, revival will wane away. But if you're constantly aware, you're revived every day. And if you're revived, you can revive people around you. <laughs> Did you say wane away on, on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> Keep way out of there, yeah. Keep way out of there. It's no longer trying to live, Christ. Praise God, and, and God does not want you to wane away. That, that's that's the whole point. That's it. And the, the third wow, thing, that this, so that that's that. So there's five points. So yeah. guys, you guys, if you have your pen and piece of paper, want to take notes. These they, these are awesome. These are these are from the Father. Yeah. These are from heaven. Live undistracted from the presence of the Lord. Do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. If you need to put a ring in your nose to remind you, then do it. And the second one, you know, it, it, it's it's God's not an event. And when the church comes together, when the family comes together, that is like a meal. That is coming to the table of the Lord to find out the heart of God. Number three, he said to me, he said, tear this temple down and in three days I'll raise it up again. And the temple that he was talking about was Solomon's temple, where where. God himself came to dwell, that the whole city fell on their faces on the pavement. And hundreds of years later, this incredible place of glory turned into an idol. And it's amazing how simple idols can turn in, things can turn into idols in our life. Yeah. You know, and prayer can be an idol. Yeah. If if all you're doing is throwing out requests with no connection to God. Yeah. And, and idols don't produce anything. But it's the connection with God that produces everything because idols are just dead things. And prayer can be a dead thing. It just can be words rolling under your mouth if there's no intimacy with it. Yeah. And, yeah. Come on. Come and on. The fourth, the fourth thing, um, the fourth thing he said was, um, as the Father sent me, I'm sending you. <laughs> and I and and I had to go to heaven to understand that because I didn't understand it. Um yeah. and, and shortly, just that, that brown chair right back there. I was sitting in that chair one night and three times in one evening, he took me into heaven. And the first time he took me into this room was about, I don't know, 30 feet long ish. And the whole front wall was all window, but there was no glass. It was just open window. And I'm in heaven, looking deeper into heaven and everything I looked at in heaven, radi- it was alive and radiated how much the father loved me. Like everything was created to, to display to, to me how much the father loved me. And I got, I got overwhelmed with love. I, I had no grid awesome. for love that was that intense. And I actually went into shock. Like I seriously, and, and I'm standing in this place and I could feel myself going into shock because I couldn't comprehend. I had no grid for that much love. And I punk, I ended up back in my chair here. And then, and, and I started to cry going, God, I had no idea. I had no idea that you loved me that much. And punk up there, I go again the second time. And the second time I'm, I'm past the shock stage and now I'm in awe. I went from shock and awe. I'm in total awe. In heaven, there is no time. I was there a long time, but here it wasn't a long time. And so I'm up there and I am soaking in this, going, my goodness, I just can't every and I'm and I can't tell you everything I've seen because as soon as I try to describe what I've seen, my mind goes blank. But I can mm. tell you what I experienced. 
-hmm. And everything I experienced was how much Papa was loved to me. But you see, it has to go from me to we. Yeah. This is the kingdom of God. If the kingdom Amen, of God brother. is all about me, it is a, a selfish, self-righteous kingdom. But if the kingdom of God is about us, we together, that's yeah. what the body is. Yeah, if it, if it becomes just a pool and no outlet, it becomes yeah. stagnant. Yeah. Stagnant water, brother. And so I'm in this place, and I so am good. just in awe that God loves everybody this much. And then Tunka come back down here, and and I, I'm crying again, going, God, I this is the I I I. How do you put words to that? Punk, I go up again, but this time when I went up the third time, in between he earth and heaven, he reminded me of the teaching that we were sharing about pride and humility. Hmm. <laughs> and 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 so like pride is exalting my imagination above God, and humility is receiving everything God says that is mine. And so this time I'm up there and I'm standing in this place realizing that I need to be in a place of humility. And I said, God, if this is how much you you love me, who am I to refuse that? And I drank it in, drank it in, drank it in, drank it in. And, and just like in, in awe that this is how much you love me. Then that scripture, John 20, 21, as the Father sent me, I send you. And I realized that this is the love that Jesus walked on earth with. And every miracle, every deliverance, everything that he did, he did to display to the entire world how much Father loves the world. Loves the world. For God so loved the world. Loved the world. For Papa love the world so much that he sent jesus it's only begotten if, son if, if anyone would believe this love <laughs> he, should not, he should not perish but have everlasting life. everlasting life and john Man. 13 and john 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 17 3 says and this is everlasting life that you would know him right know the father and he and who, know the son the, the son who he sent <laughs> yeah and so yeah, come on brother that number four where you know as the father sent me i'm sending you became real to me. And then the fifth thing he said is, I want you to change the culture of church from a gathering culture to a harvesting culture. And a gathering culture is, is, is all about me and my church. A harvesting culture is about the city. <laughs> Come on. Come and, on. And, I love and, that. And we're to be yes. equipped to do the work of the kingdom yep. in that, in that place of, of, where the where the body comes together where the apostle prophet evangelist pastor and teacher can come together to teach every single believer how to do the work of an apostle a prophet evangelist pastor and teacher and that, yeah. that you are meant to operate in all of that yeah. and the gifts of the holy spirit are to be administered through you so that the world can know if if you come across an act, accident scene do the work of an apostle raise him from the dead Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you come across somebody who's lost and hopeless, doesn't know direction, do the work of an apostle, prophesy into their life. If you come mm -hmm. across somebody and they're not saved, well, do the work of an evangelist, have them saved. Yeah. If come somebody on. is feeling disconnected on the outside, do the work of a pastor and bring them in, put your arm around them, give them a big hug, let them know that they're, they're part of a bigger thing than themselves. And if they don't yeah. understand the word of God, then teach them. <laughs> teach them. This is what, this is what a Christian life is meant to be, that the, Fivefold ministry is actually supposed to be ministering through you, right? Right through each each saint to some degree, each person, yes. And, but but in a, in in a consistent way, yeah, in a consistent way. And yes, you wow. can see in the spirit, but yeah. if you believe you can't, you you are you can't you won't. Right, because <laughs> it's all, it's a king, it's kingdom of believing. So whatever you, you can you can maintain poverty by faith Come if on, you believe brother. it's strong enough. Yeah. Come on. But if you if you believe that you are um, everything that God says you are, that you can do everything that God has predestined you to do, then the journey is really about discovering the clues in the kingdom about what your call is, what your gifts are, until you come and make that election sure. So you know without a shadow of a doubt, nothing's going to move you, that God said this. And in that, as soon as you put your foot in the game, then there's going to be all this opposition that comes at you trying to tell you, oh, get your foot out of the game because who are you? <laughs> come on, come on. Well, you know what? That, that kind of leads me to, you know, uh, to, to maybe touching on what the Lord told me in heaven it was he's talking about uh, people in the church. They, the reason why they can't be eagles is because they have a critical spirit towards one another. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he said this. He said, uh, uh, there's some in the church that cannot see past the uh, the dirt to see the treasure in my people because they have a critical spirit. Absolutely. And so the, he said they're, the, they are hypocrites because they choose not to see their brother through my eyes. Yeah. 
And I think that's kind of the whole key is, is to see ourselves through his eyes and then see others through his eyes and be committed to that. I think that's the key. I think that's also part of the blueprint, right, uh, Pastor yep. Wayne? Part, yeah. of the fun, part of the fun of the kingdom is finding the gold. You know, if you, if yeah, you look. Come on, right? Yes. Right? It, it yeah, is. Exa- it's discovery like, that yeah, and gold awesome, diggers, man. Gold diggers don't look for dirt. They look for yellow. They look for, <laughs> right? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, brother. <laughs> Yeah, Woo, shaka. Another and that's what God confirms signs, wonders, and miracles is when you discover the gold in each other. It's like it's like all of a sudden, bam! There's a move of God. Yeah, it's awesome. Another vision the Lord took me into one time. I was I, He put me above the earth a bit, and and I seen this black cylindrical hole in the in the earth. It was like deep. It was so deep it was dark, and water was gently rising up out of it. And as the water was rising out of it, it was flooding the whole earth. All right. And so the and and the, the Lord said that as the waters cover the sea, you know, that that the Holy Spirit is flooding the whole earth. And I had these, I had this question on my heart, which direction do you want me to go, God? Like, what do you really want me to do? And then I seen myself in a canoe above this black hole where the water was coming out, which is gently, it was gently caressing, right? And I'm yeah. in this canoe, and the Lord said, You can go any direction you want, just go in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and you mean <laughs> what I want? And then he took me up higher, and that black hole was his pupil. It was an eyeball, right? An eye of the Lord. And I'm looking. I'm going. My goodness, I'm on the eye of the Lord. And oh. and he said, he said I can go any direction I want. And so in my mind, in this vision, I thought I want to go deeper. And so I fell out of the canoe and I started going down into the into the eye of God so that I can see what He sees. Ooh. And. And that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to see in people what he sees. Wow. Because, what a vision. Because God sees something in you <laughs> that is so amazing. And he Come wants on. you to discover it. And that's why you have to understand that you're created in the image and likeness of God. And if you're created in the image and likeness of God, what's your starting point? Where do you yeah. start from? You have to start from this place that you have to accept in humility, that God has created you in his image and likeness, and you can do everything that he calls you to do. You can you can say anything he calls you to say. And you have to do that in this place of humility, accepting that you're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> because God is awesome. That's hard to do. That's right? hard to do sometimes, man. <laughs> Especially when you've messed up and, and uh-huh. you know a lot of the stuff that's happening in your yeah. life and hard times that you've had in your life is your fault. Yeah. That's hard to all of a sudden start thinking how awesome you are. <laughs> And and God but put, come on, guys. This is this is the, the, what's impossible with man is is possible with God. Amen. All things are are possible. Come on. And He put your eyes on the front of your head for a reason. They're prophetic <laughs> because you can only go in the direction you're looking. Come on. So if you're looking at your past at how how terrible your past was, then you're you're going to follow that path. Right. You go where you look. Exactly. You end up where you look. Right. You're right. I, and the Lord took me into another vision this one time, and there was this very broad road, wide road, and the edge of the road had flowers on it, and the flowers were alive. The flowers were alive. They could talk. And Jesus and I were walking on this wide road together, headed in, in this direction, and the flowers wouldn't say a word because of the presence of the Lord. It was like this honoring system in heaven. You know, he's just in awe that he's there. And I'm in awe that, it, that we're there. And the farther we walked up this road, the narrower it got. It got narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower until all of a sudden we were shoulder to shoulder. And I had to step back and allow him to lead. And then it got so narrow, there was only, only room for one person. And as we're walking, Jesus just slowly went back and, and came right inside of me. Oh, and we were walking together as one. And he said, this is the narrow road going in the direction that I'm leading you. If you look back, that's your that's your past. That's the wide road that leads to destruction. <laughs> that's the <laughs> wide... comes up there, brother. <laughs> that was the Holy Ghost right yeah. there, man. <laughs> if, you, if you look back at your past, that's the wide road that leads to destruction. Forgetting those things that are behind and pressing on to what's ahead is what the word of God tells us to do. And so you have to understand that God is, he sees so much goodness in you, but if you don't see it, then you're not in agreement with God. And, right. and I, yes, you've screwed right. up. Right. I've right. screwed right. up more than probably most, 
but the love of the Father is so intense, and the blood of Jesus has cleansed me from every sin. And every sin. Colossians 1, 22 in the New Living Translation says that he brings you into his presence where you stand holy and blameless before him without a single fault. Come Verse 23 on. says, but you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Right. Come and so, on. yes, I know that my past is horrific. And I've done things that I'm not not proud of. But I, don't, I can't look at that anymore because I'm that's not who I am. If any person be in Christ, they're a new creation. And the guy who did that is not the new creation. That was the old guy. Yep. The new guy is a new creation in, created in Christ for good works, for his pleasure. <laughs> and that's you. Right. You know, God's been bringing back, like, I think it was the last, the last night, two, two nights ago. Uh, he really started, he kind of was like impressing this upon me, uh, an experience I had in the throne room and the father, <laughs> the father spoke to me and he said, he said, uh, your problem is you don't believe in you the way I believe in you. <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh so good. Yep. My brother, that's <laughs> exactly what you've been ta ta teaching today, teaching today. And, and he said, uh, he said, he said, uh, you don't, you don't see yourself the way that I see you. Yeah. So, so this is a huge, this is a huge, when you understand this, mm -hmm. uh, to say, okay, you know what? Yeah, I, I'm not believing in myself the way that the father believes in me. I never thought about believing in myself before. I never thought like, cause it's just, you know, believe in Jesus, but, but not me. Yeah. And, but, but, but the key is, is believing in Jesus and you, the way yeah. Jesus believes in who you are to him. Yeah. And that's, that's just, that's, that's part of the whole equation. That's part of the whole gospel is to redeem sons of the sons of God, right? It's that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, yeah. right? That's, that's, that's the last part of the uh, Romans chapter eight, verse 29. It says that you're predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn of many sons, right. which is who you and yeah. me. And, yeah. and and he believes in you that way. Yes, he believes in he believes in you watching that way. And uh, and so there's a there's a revelation, and in that revelation is the glory. And and if you press into that revelation of the glory, you'll be transformed into that image. Absolutely. Well, wow, that's what we're walking in. Wayne. Awesome people do awesome things. <laughs> Let's go. Let's right? go. Hey, hey, hey God awesome is, and the awesome God is glorified. That's it. God who is awesome is glorified. Absolutely. Yeah. And so if you if you agree with God and who He's created you to be, then and and you get to know Him. Those who know their God will do great exploits. <laughs> Whew, I, <laughs> I see fireworks going off in people's heads right now. Like <laughs> Revelation just. Yeah. This is awesome because this this changed my life. This this stuff changed my life. Yeah. And this stuff, this stuff has changed Pastor Wayne's life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and this is, this is the gospel. This yeah. is, this is the gospel that we preach and, and that changes people's life. And this is that God has ordained that the preaching of the gospel, uh, to save those who believe it. And, uh, so, so I've chosen to believe it, Wayne, and man, I've been changed. Yeah. You've chosen to believe it. You've been changed. And, and, uh, he's also the author and the finisher of our faith. So he's the one that is going to do the things that is going to feed our faith. Yeah. So that, so that we come into that end product of who God has called us to be. And until we can walk through a wall, we're not finished. Yeah. Let's go. Let's, <laughs> there you go. Exactly, brother. <laughs> you know, God's, God in his word, he says that, um, you know, cause they, they try to trick him. They say, you know, which is the greatest commandment? And, and he, he responds by saying, because he knows they're trying to trick him. He responds by saying, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second command is like the first one. So the like second the command is, is, is like the first one. Love your neighbor as yourself. So if the second command is like the first one, how are you supposed to love yourself? You're supposed to love yourself like God loves you with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Because you can't love your neighbor with the love of God unless you love you with the love of God. Right, 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 right. Just, right. You love your neighbor as yourself. And so oh, when you exactly. when you agree with God and you come into a place that God has created you, created you marvelously, wonderfully, fearfully, wonderfully made, and that you're that He's made you for good works, that He's predestined you, that He has faith in you, that He wants you to do um, everything that He's called you to do, and you come into that place where you you actually love yourself. Because I know what it's like to walk by a mirror and hate myself. I know what that's yeah. like. Hate yeah, is just no goodness in me. And then I got born again. And God, he, he told me that I had to look in the mirror until I love myself. 
And, and, and that was the hardest thing I could ever do. Yeah, because to overcome was... self-hatred is, uh, this yeah. is how it's done. Right so here, I started guys. looking in the mirror until I seen Jesus. Until I seen Jesus in my eyes. And when you've seen the eyes of Jesus, it will transform you. And you cannot love like God loves unless you love you like God loves you. Yeah, yeah it's true. It, it has to happen. It's, it's it's part of the kingdom. You have to. You have to. You have to. You have to let it come. Uh, uh, you have to. You have to receive it for yourself before you can give it to other people. And that's kind of maybe where there's a little bit of a dis disconnect. You come to church and maybe you don't feel so loved the way you're kind of expecting. But it's maybe some of those Christians still haven't. They still got that disconnect. It's not. It's not that they wouldn't love you. It's yeah. that they. They are not. They. They have still had that disconnect that they over, have to overcome so that they can love you that way too but it's, so just wait hang on you know um not everybody's there yet and, and there's uh, training Pe people have been training. trained inside of christianity that there's nothing good in you yeah right right if you if you right. if you think there's anything good in you you're a prideful person and god's going to smack you down Right. That's the really that's the ugly religious that's spirit right the there. Ugly we, religious spirit. It makes Christians ugly. <laughs> and, and and inside and outside too, guys. <laughs> yeah. So the gospel becomes if you don't yeah. turn, you're not coming to heaven with me. <laughs> yeah. Right? No, for God so loved the world. The world. Yes. He so loved the world. He loved us past their sin. Jesus on the yeah. cross said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And 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 that. And I, that statement in itself, he those Romans they perfected they perfected how to exact the most amount of pain out of someone before they died, and I thought they knew what they were doing. But then one day I was standing in my driveway here, and the Lord said to me, Wayne, when you die, your body goes back to dirt. I went, Yeah, it does. He said, Your brain will go back to dirt. I said, Yes, it will. He said, But you'll continue to think. Mm -hmm. My jaw dropped without a brain. Mm -hmm. I'll to think what i went what and then he said therefore the origin of your thought is not your brain it's your spirit and yep. one of the words for spirit is mind yep and repent means to change your mind yeah but the bible actually says spirit of your mind yeah and so yeah. you wow. receive not the spirit of the spirit of the world not the mind of the world but the spirit who's from god that you might know the things that god has freely given you you can't know the things that god's freely given living you if you haven't fully surrendered and you're still a christian living in the spirit of the world Right, with in using the carnal mind, trying to you have out. to come into Christ and have the mind of Christ. Right, that's where the revelation comes. That's where Papa begins to reveal Jesus in you, and that's where all of a sudden your life is transformed because now Papa's telling you who you are. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep. And the moment Papa starts Ooh. telling you who you are, all the demons are going to go, ah, <laughs> no, all this work we put into them, it's it's unfolding. <laughs> <laughs> they're starting to love themselves. No, they're starting to love others. <laughs> <laughs> and you just, you, then you have the ability to love the hell out of them. Yeah. And you have, the, that's called the having the fruits of the spirit against which there is no law. The yeah. whole point of all the works of the devil is to get you to yeah. not walk in love. Yeah. Because if you don't walk in love, then then they have a legal. You 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 have a le there's a legal. They have a legal right on you. Then if you break the sin is the breaking of the law. You break the law. Now you're under the curse of the law, the wrath of the law, wrath of the law, and and the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of the devil working against you is to yeah. keep you from walking in love. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the yeah. law was powerless to do, God did by sending His own Son. And so it's not by my works, it's by his. It's not by what I can offer God, it's by what he offered for me. Amen. Amen. And then, <laughs> and then we're in by that grace, we're able, we're able to love him. Yeah. As John said, we love he loved us first. We we love him because he first loved us. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and and so so that so that's being solidified in us. The more we do it, the more we walk together, the more we learn the word of God, get filled with the word of God, filled with the spirit of God, and and walk with God in power, like uh like when you're talking about uh yeah. becoming what like walking with Christ as one. Yeah. Uh that's the Lord said, Many know my works, but they don't know my ways. And he said, My ways, he told me this. He said, My ways, uh, my way is that the Christian who is a new creature be filled with the presence and the power of, of God in, in the body yeah. every day and then walk in, in the one new man with the Holy Spirit 
in step with him. Right. So that's the way of the Lord is to become one with him by being filled with his presence and then believe that you literally are one person with Christ in yeah. the Holy, with the Holy Spirit as you walk out your day. That's the way of the Lord. And it's, that takes, you got to practice that, man. You <laughs> it's kind of like, it's kind of like playing Genesis three backwards. Right? <laughs> if, you, if, if, you, if you had it on a film and you played it backwards, then you'd come back into the mind of Christ, which is what Jesus did on the cross. Because yeah, Eve, come on, they went out and they reached from the the fruit of the tree of life, and, and the Word of God says that that Eve looked at the tree; it was good for food, pleasant to the eyes, and desirable to make one wise. Have you ever seen fruit on planet Earth anywhere where you said, "Man, if I eat that, I'm going to get smart"? No, it's not there. No. That tree is represented; it's it's symbolic as a spirit. The spirit right. of the world. Yes. And the tree yes. of life is symbolic for the for the spirit of God, which is the fruit. And what fruit grows off the spirit of God? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. It, it's it's fruits of the mind, fruits of your understanding. And, and it says that immediately their eyes were opened and they knew they were naked. Now they're the fruit of their thinking was now from the place of the spirit of the world. They transferred from the spirit of God to the spirit of the world. And that's why they had to go out of the Garden of Eden into Eden. And they weren't allowed back in. Christ was the sword that was laid down. He was the, the veil that was torn mm. and yeah. brought us back into. So if you play it backwards, you come into the fullness of what God wants you to live, which is in the presence of God 24-7. Where's God right now? <laughs> He's right here right now. Yeah, And it's yeah, so easy, exactly. even in the middle of, uh, of worship services and and all this stuff, it's easy to check out and get so focused on something. But but when you when you train yourself to focus on on the messages that the Lord's giving, whether it's through an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, but you focus them from in the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. the revelation realm explodes quicker in you than mm -hmm. just sitting there through a service and listening. Right, because that is good. That is good. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And there's there's many people in church that are listening to the Word of God, but not the Spirit Word. Right. <laughs> and it's the Spirit that gives life. The flesh produces nothing. The right. words that I speak to you, they are Spirit in their life, John 6, 63. And so right. it, 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 it all comes down to how much do you really love God and how much do you really love yourself? Right, right. Because right. if you love yourself like God loves you, you'll be able to love the world like God loves them. <laughs> That's exactly right. And you won't sin anymore because you're worth more than that sin. Well, I, I've discovered this 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 truth for myself, and I find it in the Word as well, that um, there's a lot of people that are that are Christians, and they're stuck in all types of sins, and, and they're just repeat sins, repeat, you know, wash, right. rinse, rinse, repeat, you know, and they yeah. end up doing this. And because they're trying to be holy. Well, you can't do holy to be holy. You have to be holy to do holy. Right. And holiness is something right. you receive from the Lord. It comes from favor. Yeah, exactly. You receive it from the Lord. Yeah. And so just like I got um, my salvation came free as a free gift from God, holiness comes as a free gift. Righteousness comes as a free gift. But if I think I have to work for my righteousness, I've, I'm, I'm working in the wrong covenant. I'm actually working in the covenant of, of that that he, that he cut with Aaron, right? <clears throat> right? But Hebrews says that there, it talks about the order of Aaron and the order of Melchizedek. Yeah, Hebrews chapter seven, yeah. and and the word order means provision. Yeah. You can get the provision of Aaron or the provision of Melchizedek, right. but Aaron's right. provision. I like that. It means provision. That's good. Aaron's provision had a head-on collision with the cross, and all of the yeah. provision from Aaron and and that covenant uh, ended. Yeah, and now the provision of Melchizedek, who's our high priest. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so when I receive the gift after the order, provision, order or provision of an endless life, yeah. right? When I re yeah. receive holiness, when I receive righteousness, when I receive salvation, there's provision for it. Right. But if I have to work for it, there's no provision. Right. 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 Exactly. Wrong. Exactly. Covenant. Yep. Exactly. And then. You are, you're, and then what you do, what you do is, is uh, wrought of God. The mm -hmm. works you do do are the works of God yeah. and, and those, and the works and only the works of God save you. And so, so that there's a mystery there that it's, it, it comes works. Yeah. 
Exactly. And, 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 and that, and then that solidifies you when you do what's right. Mm -hmm. Nobody can take that from you. Yeah. Not even God can take that from you. And that's what God wants to give. He wants to give you something that nobody can take away from you for the rest of eternity. And that's being the sons of God, because, because you were obedient to the father, which you're obedient to the son, which proved that you loved him and that you're his sons. And that is the grace of God. That's the favor of God. Yeah. That's the destiny, the predestined, predestined and the uh, battle God in your life. The battle you're in is determined by where where you're living, where you're wow. living from, where you're living from. Okay. Right. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. he says that those who worship me must must worship me in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Those two little letters, I am. I'm in my office. Yeah. It's a place. Yeah, that's that's okay. good. That little little word right there. <laughs> it's a place. Unit unity is not that a little idea. word is a big is a big word. <laughs> that's it. Unity is not a an idea or a concept. It's a place. And when I'm in unity with God, then everything I do becomes unity with my brothers. Yeah. But if yeah, I'm trying to do it from the spirit of the world, it'll never happen. Because that, that's where the arguments come up. That's where the religious spirits are able to speak through Christians. Right, right, exactly. Right? Because they're speaking yeah. from the spirit of the world, just like Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. He didn't say that to Peter. He said, you're now in the spirit of the world, and you're listening to what Satan has to say, and that's why your words are speaking from the abundance of your heart, where you're living from. I'm right. going to give you to a place where you can live in Christ, where you can live in the Father, and then you're going to speak the words that are in him, and they're going to produce life. Hooey. <laughs> that's hot <laughs> it's, so it's beautiful it's beautiful to understand it so it's like a it's a it's a location it's a location thing a location. The heart. location yes. of the heart where, you're, the where, your heart, knows. where your heart is there where your treasure is there your heart is and out of the abundance of the heart the, the, heart, mouth the speaks. most speaks and so the devil can't figure you out but as soon as you speak he knows your location Let's are you go. located in christ or are you located in the world Let's go. Paul, Paul said, we, we, our conversation is in heaven. Yeah. That's what Paul said. I think yeah. it's in Corinthians. I think. Yeah. Follow yeah. me as I follow Christ. And where do you yeah. follow? Right into the heart of the father. That's where we live from. That's what full surrender is. Full surrender yeah. equals full victory. Amen. Partial surrender. Woo! No victory. I, I saw that I saw I saw in the throne room I saw people sitting down with their legs crossed listening to every word that came out of the father's mouth mm -hmm. and and it was bread that, that was in their hands and they ate it yeah. and everyone that ate it um everyone that ate it they uh, they grew up in a mighty warriors and the father said the father said this is the doctrine of God that you that man does not live man does not live on bread alone but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God yeah. and he said all those that come here and listen to my every word he mm -hmm. says they'll rise up and they will overcome all things yeah and so that you, you're just oh man it's mm -hmm. so good Wayne so good like what what the revelation that's flowing here brother <laughs> it's so powerful and i i believe i believe there's people that are really getting stirred up really getting fed um you know when we speak these things like when the things you're telling us sharing with us today that that um what the lord showed me like it it, it uh impact it gives us strength that god in the bible it says that god is a god that gives his people strength power and strength mm -hmm. power and strength and how that happens is through the, the hearing of the word and so when you teach true revelation, it, that it literally, as we're hearing it, it gives us spiritual strength to hear yeah. and to see better. Like, that's a fact. And I feel that literally in my spirit right now. And I believe that people, that our friends and our partners that are watching right now, Eagle brothers and sisters mm -hmm. that are watching, are getting super strong right now. And yeah. um, and I, I do want to take a little bit of time to uh to pray uh for them because i and i know uh we've been going about an hour and 39 minutes and i, I know there was no time limit but uh, but i know uh i know wayne you're a busy guy too but i know that this is such powerful ministry there's people here that are real powerful men and women of god eagles pro uh, prophets uh that have a, a a great ministry and uh and also just stepping into a new season of of the prophetic ministry that uh, that we're talking about moving in these things uh can we can you pray for uh some of these and i know maybe someone was struggling with the carnal mind like you know what 
mm-hmm. I can't get out of my own carnal mind that I, you know, getting into the spirit of Christ is hard for me. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I got to repent to that. You know, I, cause sometimes like, you know, the key is repentance. It's yeah. like, oh, okay, we should have just repented last week then. <laughs> but it's like, it's like sometimes it takes, the, you know, just to be able to just repent of that, you know, the word say. repent little, literally in the concordance, when you look it up, the word repent means to change your mind. That's it. A lot of That's people it. say that repent means to turn and go the other way. No, you can't turn and go the other way until you change from the spirit of the world, the mind of the world to the mind of Christ. Yeah, that is repentance, right. coming out of agreement, out of partnership with the mind of the world. If, right. if, if the Bible doesn't say this is who you are, and you partnered with that, if you partner with the lie, it becomes your truth. Right. And where people and, and repent is so repent is acknowledging you're wrong. Say I'm wrong. I repent, and I'm changing my mind in that area. So it's, it's, it's actually be a good... acknowledging that you have a partnership with something that the world of the world says instead That's of cool. what God says. That's good. repentance means I'm coming out of agreement. I'm coming out of covenant with the lie, and I'm coming into covenant with the truth. And it's that coming into covenant in that word in. You're coming in covenant with Christ. Then you're able to think differently, which causes you to live differently. Because, Ooh, yeah. because you can try as hard as you want, but if you're trying from the spirit of the world, there's no repentance. Right, 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 right. Right? Repentance it's is exactly coming right. out of agreement, out of partnership, out of, out of covenant with everything that hell has said about you. Right. It's coming into agreement and covenant with everything God says about you. And if right. God says you're you're awesome, yeah, the wisdom that comes from above, then you have to come into covenant with God that I am created in His image and likeness. That is that is repentance, and repentance causes you to live from a different place, which gets better results. So, could you pray? Could you lead us in a prayer through that? Yes, that, that to, would be that would I be. Weird. Share, I also think there's an activation here too. Yeah. Well, activate. Yeah. There's one more thing that is necessary. When it comes to the mind of Christ, Come on. Paul writes that praying in tongues strengthens us, mm-hmm. and us brings brings an ability to understand things that we couldn't understand before. Because strength in Scripture in Colossians talks about wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual understanding. In in Ephesians, it's the same thing, but it comes by the Spirit by revelation. So when you're praying in tongues, what's happening? Is you, you're uh, you you you're praying in tongues and God Himself is revealing things to you through wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Mm-hmm. And that's how you become stronger. You don't become stronger um, physically, like Marty here, who can hundreds, <laughs> but you become spiritually stronger. So you you can withstand the things that the enemy's thrown at you. Where you know which I will which I will say affects your physical body too. It does. Like the presence and the power of God and the, and the so all that. Bless, I want to pray. Yeah. I want to pray, but I, but you have to do your part. Okay. Yeah. Because what what's happened a lot of times in Christianity is is people are hoping that someone will pray for them and things will change, but the prayer is so that you'll change. Right. The way you think. That's it. That's where it. you think from. That's what the prayer is about. Is changing where you think from so that and and so that so that you can begin to have that intimate relationship with the Lord where you can come to his table and at his table he begins to tell you things because it's it's not good enough to live on someone else's bread you, you know there's bread for you that God himself wants to give you and so my prayer is going to be that what's activated in you is an awareness of the spirit of God so that you can hear from the Father who Christ is. Yeah. And that's where your strength comes from. Your strength yeah. comes from Him. It doesn't come from my prayer, but my prayer is going to activate something so that you can actually live differently. And 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 you know, I've I prayed for people who who some of who've who've received it and some who haven't. And what happens is is how you receive it in the Lord is what's going to change you. Because only God can change you. Right. But together. As we pray, the Spirit of God will activate things if you're in agreement with it. Right, right, okay? exactly. It's all about it's all about how you receive the word. Right. So it's not a magical words. prayer; it's yeah. a prayer of agreement. <laughs> exactly. Okay? Exactly. Yeah. Fire, fire of God is all over this. 
So, Father God, we are so grateful that you're here with us right now, that you never leave. Holy Spirit, we're so grateful that you're here, that you never leave. Jesus, thank you so much for everything you've done. We acknowledge that you are the way, the truth, and the life, that no one can come to the Father except through you. And so by the oh, by your by your commitment, by your sacrifice, Lord, we come to you cleansed, washed in the blood. We thank you that we are yes, we are God. we are washed in the blood, that we are new creations, that we are that, that we are new in Christ. Thank you, Father. And we stand before you, holy, blameless, as we stand before you without a single fault. And we believe this truth of what you've done. Now, Lord, I ask for everyone who is listening to this now and everyone who will listen to this in the future. Holy Spirit, that you would awaken their hearts, yes, awaken their hearts, give them that tweak in their heart that they could understand how you've created them, what you've created them for. God, that, that any lie that they've partnered with, God, Holy mm. Spirit, that you, would, that you would show them the lie that they've partnered with, that they would come out of agreement with it and come into the truth of, and the awareness of every promise that is from you. Yes, Lord. Every promise. And God, for those who are who have been slipping in their commitment to you and reading your word and praying in tongues, Lord, I ask right now that you'd awaken them now to bring an awareness of the importance of the word of God every single day, of the praying in tongues every single day. God, that you would you would show them how they are to just kick off their work boots and come to the table and allow the body of Christ, the DNA of who you are, to begin to permeate every cell in their body and every every point of their understanding. Father, we release loose right now a fresh anointing on their life. The anointing where, where your word says destroys the yoke. Doesn't, doesn't break it, destroys it. God, that you would destroy that yoke that is in their life, that yoke of understanding. Yes. Right now, in Jesus' name, and I declare over those who are listening right now, a fresh wind in their mind to blow away all the fogginess, all the unclarity. And Lord, Holy Spirit, that you would awaken them right now in the Spirit. Awaken them. God, give them revelations. Father God, give them revelations of Christ in them, the hope of glory. And Father, we thank you that you've given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. And right now, in Jesus' name, I loose a fresh anointing on their lives. Jesus and Holy Spirit, flood their hearts right now. Flood their hearts right now. Open up their awareness of you. Open up their awareness. Give them the keys, God, that are necessary to open yes. the doors that you want them to walk through. Yes. Let your favor be upon your people. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And if you, if you receive that, you believe that, say amen. Amen. Woo-wee. Man, I feel the, the the outpouring of the presence of God just came there the, with some lightning, <laughs> with some power. I'm telling you, it's, it is the it's the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that is that is flowing here. And uh, Wayne, what a what a powerful revelation, testimony, revelation. What God is doing with uh, with you guys' church in uh, in BC, and it's in Nanaimo, right? Nanaimo, yeah, yeah, Nanaimo, Nanaimo, BC, yep. and uh, just an amazing, amazing uh, a man of God, uh, Wayne, and uh, the, and uh, the uh, the church there for so many, so many good things going on there. What you guys are doing there and uh, bringing people to Christ, the signs, the wonders, and the miracles that God is doing, confirming the ministry there is just awesome. Uh, people getting saved. Um, I'm like almost every week. I think I, I see a post of mm-hmm. like another one got saved. Another one got saved this Sunday. Another <laughs> uh, three got saved this Sunday. Five got saved. It's just like man, this is awesome. Like like the fruit, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so God can you know the blessing of God c- confirming you know what you guys are doing. People getting saved. Uh, uh, what you you're teaching today, uh, proof that what you're teaching today is the truth. Like it works. Th- this is it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fault, the fault, like, um, uh, Jesus has, has come to bring us to the father yeah. and, uh, the Holy spirit is here to give us access to the father. And, uh, and it's true. It's true. We have access by the spirit to yeah. go. If we can just get out of our own heads, <laughs> uh, so to speak and, uh, and just go and let, don't let anything hold you back from the presence of God. Don't let anything hold you back from seeing Jesus. Don't let anything hold you back from being filled with the Holy spirit and power. Don't let anything hold you back from being filled with the word of God and being able to study it and believe it exactly the way that God wants you to according to Jesus teachings, the apostles teachings, and don't let anything hold you back from going to the throne room seeing the father on the throne even yeah. 
yeah. go there don't yeah. let anything hold you back you know some people they say i've tried and i didn't see anything we'll just keep trying because yeah you know uh the god gives grace to god rewards those who diligently seek him yeah. and so uh so you know uh, i think maybe uh, maybe some of the thing that you need you need to hear this kind of faith today so that you can have a little bit more diligence you know what i mean just get a little more oomph in you you know recharge to like no no i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep praying you know i i quit praying last month but i'm gonna start again this month yeah. and i'm gonna i'm gonna get back in my prayer clause and i'm gonna make it this time amen and uh, and i believe you will i believe you guys are gonna have those kind of testimonies that man i saw the father this time um the father told me and and uh uh, you know, and there's so many times. I, 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 I'm not going to share anything here, but uh, uh, we've we've gone long enough. But what I want to do, uh, Wayne, is there maybe what I'll do? I'll pop up a couple names, and we'll just pray for uh, people. If we can see some visions or prophetic words for you guys. We're just going to take a few minutes just to do that, kind of in closing here, uh, because we want to uh, we want to just uh, have that kind of special time too of the prophetic uh, pouring into you guys. Amen. There's uh, Eva. If uh, if Wayne, if you don't mind praying for eva sure Praise god if you see anything for eva, but for everybody else i want to give you a challenge and i give this to a lot of people i call it a Amen. 30 30 challenge 30 minutes reading the word of god for 30 minutes a day for 30 days take Let's an inventory go. take an inventory of your life right now and i guarantee you this is a guarantee that i can give you if you will read the word of god for 30 minutes a day for 30 days and then after 30 days check your life i, I guarantee you you're going to be in a better place Amen. And can I can I add to that challenge? Yep. <clears throat> First thing when you wake up in the morning, say, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Yes. And Lord, I want to come up to the throne. I want to go in. I want to see you before I get out of bed. Try that for the next 30 days too. Yep. That's Every right. morning I anoint myself with oil in the presence of the Lord. And I say, God, this is your day. Whatever you want to happen, it's yours. <laughs> Let's go. Eva. So those are some good challenges. Yeah. Those are some really good. You know what? I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that challenge too, Wayne. Praise God. Praise God. You'll, you'll yeah. find it. You'll find a major difference. Yeah, I think, I think I do. I do read a lot. Like I do read a lot and preach a yeah. lot and, and study a lot. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the 30, 30 minute challenge. Yep. Thirty minutes a day challenge. That's a good challenge. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. And somebody out there needs to hear this. You know, there was uh, many, many times in my life when I've, um, even in preaching where after I've preached a message, I've come off and the Lord said, well, that wasn't quite right, son. And he's, he's corrected me. And I'm like, oh, I did it again. What do I do, God? And he says, just don't preach it that way anymore. Yeah. No condemnation. No condemnation. That's There's it. no condemnation in Christ. There's no condemnation. But And so somebody here has done something in the past that you thought disqualified you, where the enemies come in and they put it in your mind. Um, Maybe it's even Eva. I don't know. Maybe not. But there's somebody out there who you thought you were disqualified. And the Lord wants to let you know you're not disqualified. Mistakes don't disqualify you. God is able to work through your mistakes. And so whoever that is, I want you to know that, that God is still with you. He's still for you. He's never left you. But some lie has creeped into your life and you've kind of checked out of what God's called you to do because you mm. thought you disqualified yourself. You're not <clears throat> disqualified. He's the one who qualifies you and he, he's cleansed you. It's all good. Carry on. Amy, Amy said, that's me. Amy, Amy said, that's you? me. Okay. You, and the enemy will even use people, Christians, to come and try to condemn you. But you have to understand that Peter, <laughs> he was trying to tell Jesus, you're doing it wrong. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Now, that isn't you go up to people and say, get behind me, Satan. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the Lord has qualified you, Amy, that he's the one who, and, and there's a gift and a call in your life that, that I see that, that goes way down deep. And I see that many, many years ago, you swallowed the sword of the Spirit. You swallowed it. And the Lord is now pulling that sword of the Spirit out, and he's placing it in your hand. And he's saying, I want you to go and begin to do the battle that I've called you to do, that I, I have qualified you. And you're going you're gonna to discover as the Lord leads you in this, in this path that, that many of the things that you learned in this season where you thought you were disqualified, just like Moses learned all these wonderful things, you're going to discover some of the things that the enemy meant for evil. God is going to begin 
going to make good. And you're going to see other people's lives bettered and purified by the word of God that comes out of your mouth. The word of God is now, the sword of the spirit is now coming out of your mouth and it's meant to purify others. And the Lord says, run with fire and love the hell out of them. Let's go, Amy. Let's go. You know, Brenda, she said me too. So that's for you too, Brenda. Yeah. And anybody else that uh, you felt disqualified and you're kind of, sh you shut yourself off, shut yourself down. Yeah. You are now reactivated in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and uh, who is it, Eva? Yes, Eva. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Amen. Eva, I see the, I see the, um, the Lord is, he's, he's taking you and he's shaking you somewhat. And whatever needs to be shaken is going to be shaken so that whatever's meant to be there will remain. And I, and I, I we've been talking earlier about gold and I, and I, I love watching gold digging programs where they, you know, cause I want to find out how much they find. Right. And they start off by putting these great big chunks in there and they shake it down and they, and they, they refine it. And Eva, the Lord's been putting you through a refining season where he's taken those First, he took those big things out of your life, but now he's taking smaller and smaller and smaller, and he's bringing you down to a place where where it's uh, the gold is left. And I feel that the next season that you're going into is going to be a season of refiner's fire, and not the refiner's fire where people, you know, because apparently it has to the gold has to be like two thousand degrees before it begins to do what it's necessary to do. But that refining that's going to happen in you, the Holy Spirit's going to begin to burn in your life with such intensity and such ferocity that the people around you are going to begin to experience the presence of the Lord. But he, he wants you to know that the shaking that, that has gone on in your life for the last little while, has um, it, it's not wasted. It's taking out things that needed to be taken out so that, that what, what can remain. And what remains is the weightiness of the gold. And there's a weightiness in your life. And God wants you to know that he He loves you, he values you, and he trusts you. And that weightiness of the spirit, expect to see it increase in your life. Amen. Oh, my goodness. I feel the presence of God like, like, tank, like electricity on my arms. Hallelujah. Steve Plasky. Steve Plasky. Yeah, Wayne, do you have any, see anything for Steve? Yeah, instantly as soon as I see Steve, I, I I'm I'm thinking of a, a hunter. Come on, um, a hunter and and someone who's after after some prey, and God has placed you as a person who many times you're not right out in the front, but you're you're that guy that's in the camouflage place where the enemy can't see you, and you're taking out um, things that are actually trying to take out others, and a lot of the things that that happen um, through you are go unnoticed on earth but the lord wants you to know they're very noticed in heaven because he's called you as somebody to to um stand on guard like a sniper if you will and the lord's gonna he's gonna continue to show you things in the spirit where the enemy's trying to come and stop something but before they before they even come to that place there's been a sniper called steve who's been put in place to take out the enemy so that what god wants to do is going to continue on and um because of the, that sniper thing, you're sort of hidden. <laughs> but again, the Lord says, you may be hidden in the, in the sight of man, but you are not hidden in the sight of heaven. I am putting you exactly where I need you to be. And the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God to pulling down strongholds. And God actually puts you out in front to pull down these strongholds so that the victory can that other people are receiving that is seen are happening because what, what is unseen is doing much of the work. Yeah, come on! As you're speaking that way, and I just seen Steve, the presence of God, just like a just like a flood, pouring out on you, just is pouring out on you right now in <laughs> Jesus' name. Take it, brother. Take it. Take it. Take it. Shakata rabakai, Rama sanda rabakai, Ramo sanda rabakai, Ramosa. A man full of the Holy Ghost, Steve. Come on, brother. Praise God. Whoa. Ha sanda bakai. Guys, just receive that. Amen. Just take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Praise God. That's not just for Steve, man. That's for that's for everybody here. That's Amen. Hungry. Thank uh you, hans uh hans praise god my good friend hans from uh he's a mighty mighty man of god and an apostle from from thailand that I, I he's the first church that i preached in thailand in january oh praise, praise god. god see i love you hans yeah go go ahead wayne praise god you see anything for hans i immediately i see a um um a whirlpool and uh where i live in bc there was this uh 
this this these narrows that comes in and they're 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 violent narrows and there used to be this thing called ripple rock that would cause a whirlwind uh, a whirlpool that could actually suck logs down like massive logs would suck them right down and what i see that's going on in your church hands is there's a whole pile of things that are going on in the spirit realm that are not healthy and god is using your church to kind of um as a whirlwind to suck them down to get rid of them and mm. it's it's like he's using you to cleanse the water okay and the word of god <laughs> which is the washing of the water of the word yep. uh, through your lips i see is going into people's lives and it's cleansing them and taking out those logs that have you know Jesus says, don't be worried about the speck in your own eye, if you, if, or pardon me, the speck in your brother's eye when you've got a log in your own. And the word of God is cleansing people to the point where they're starting to realize, I've been, I've been accusing other people, and I, I haven't realized there was a log in my own eye. And the, the word of God that's coming through you is actually pulling that, those logs out of people's eyes, and they're beginning to see people differently. They're beginning to see people with the eyes of the Lord. And the Lord wants to encourage you to keep preaching his word in truth. Because what you're doing is very effective. And I see what he's doing is he's bringing a cleansing to the water. It's kind of like the salt being thrown into the water and the, 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 the poison water becomes cleansed. And I see that happening in a lot of people that, that are coming to your church. I see more people coming to your church. And as, as they're coming in, there's a cleansing happening and, and, and they're being purified by the word of God. And so keep preaching the word, brother. You know, you know, I have to say this, this is blowing my mind right now because, because what you just, what you just said, Pastor Wayne, Sunday night, I was at the Haven Church in Medicine Hat and I was prophesying over the pastor mm -hmm. and I prophesied, I see water coming out of your mouth mm. and it's, and it's the water coming out to, to wash the church and it's the, the water is the washing of the water, the, wa the, the word is a washing, washing of the water of the word, yeah. washing the church. And mm -hmm. I, so I literally said the same thing that you just said to, to Hans Sunday night. So like, you can't, you can't make this stuff up guys. It's awesome signs and wonders. And uh, Hans bless you uh, because he is doing a mighty work there in Thailand. He's, he's a uh, revivalist. He's, uh, he's bringing the fire. He's bringing the signs and the wonders every Sunday. And uh, it's just, yeah, just a huge, huge, awesome, awesome. I also see, I God. see for Hans, I see these um, Bibles, Bibles, and they're coming. It's like the Bibles represent the word of God, of course. And the word of God is going to continue to come to you fresh, fresh, fresh. And there's, there's going to be um, mm. fresh manna, fresh word that's going to come to you in the middle of preaching. And you're going to stand in this place going, holy smokes, did that ever sound amazing? <laughs> it's the fresh manna that's, I mean, it's going to be instant. It's going to come and, and be released in a moment's time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I can, I concur. I concur. I see also, I also saw a hammer dropping. Like my word, my word is like a hammer. So people are going to get wow. hammered in your church, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Whoo, shot cut, boom. Yeah. yeah, mighty, mighty man of God, Hans. Love you. That was awesome, Wayne. That was absolutely amazing. Um, let's maybe do maybe uh, a couple more and then we'll we'll bring it to an end here. Uh Linda McCleary. Hey. Praise God. Thank you, God. Thank Linda, you. Linda, what I what I instantly seen over over top of you, I, I seen these um rain clouds. And the rain clouds are good. It is beautiful. Good. It's like um, that spring rain. Good. And I see the, I see the, the rain coming down upon your life, coming down upon your life. And the, the beauty of the rain is, is like, there's nowhere, no way to get out of it. It's like, <laughs> no matter, no matter where you go, the rain of God is going to continue to come upon you. And I see what he's, what the rain is doing is it's bringing a cleansing over your life. A washing because um there's been some hard things that you walk through i won't get into those details that's that's between you and god but there's been there's been this hard thing that you went through and i see the rain of god continuing to wash you and what feels annoying at first when you're out in the middle of the rain and you can't get out of it is going to turn into laughter it's going to keep coming and there's there's going to be a washing washing and all of a sudden there's going to be a laughter break out of your heart and then i see you begin to dance in the rain and the Lord loves your dance. He loves seeing you smile. He loves the joy that that just pours out of you. But this rain is cleansing off all the outer stuff that has tried to um, hide the real you. And um, 
the real you's never been hidden from God, but you're going to come into you're coming into a season of that latter rain, if you will, where the um, there's going to be a, a a greater the former and the latter rain, but the latter rain is going to really really fire you up. And I see that as this rain continues to pour upon you and wash you and cleanse you, that as the rain touches you, it turns to fire. It's a, it's a holy fire. And, mm. and there's this statement that I heard years ago that people are going to set, or the Lord's going to set you on fire. People are going to see you burn. But the burning is going to, it's going to come from within your heart. There's going to be such a cleansing that from within you, that anything that touches you is going to start to, to um, produce the fire of God and yeah. other people, because it has to go from me to we, okay? It has to go. There has to be an outflow. And the Lord's going to even open up outflow for you, other people who need that same rain, and you're going to welcome into the, the, the rain of the Lord. And it's going to turn from a rain to a rain. You're going to reign with Christ. Wow, mm -hmm. man. So many, so many beautiful, uh, beautiful things that uh, that in the uh -huh. spirit that are that are that are <laughs> happening there. Glory to God, Linda. Bless you, Samantha. Come on, do you know Samantha? I know Samantha. She is one of my daughter, spiritual daughters. Oh, come on. I, love oh, I got her. electricity on my prophet finger as soon as you said that. <laughs> yeah, she has got a story of darkness to light that is so incredible, so incredible, and she has such a tenacious spirit to to pursue God and, and Samantha, I, I am so proud to have you on here, man. You brought tears to my eyes, just seeing your name. Oh. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. This girl has, has gone uh, through hell on earth and has, has discovered that, that heaven's a better place to live. And, Come on. and so Samantha, I just, I'm so honored to have you as a spiritual daughter. And today I feel like the Lord, you know, I, I see the Lord, seriously, you just brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> the Lord has, uh, I see you baking a cake. Come on. That's what I see. I see you baking a cake, and, and you and the Lord are baking this cake. And, and you're so excited about this cake because you desire other people to eat it. You're not baking the cake so you can eat it. You're baking the cake because you just so love to see other people refreshed and and joy and i see this cake is just loaded with um um the, the little trinkets that you put on it. i don't know what you call it, little sprinkles and all that kind of stuff and but you and the lord bake this cake and now you're 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 administering it out and it's really funny because you know when you think you're going to give someone a cake you give them a piece of cake you're actually giving them the whole cake yeah. you just get here have the whole thing you don't need a piece have the whole darn thing the kingdom is yours and and Lord has put that in your in your heart for other people that hey you need to experience the kingdom. Here's the fullness. Eat the whole cake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you're not gonna have a piece of it. You're you're willing to give the whole shebang to someone else. And, wow. and the Lord sees this heart, and and then he gets to bake another cake with you. And this is gonna go on and on and on in your life. You're gonna have you're gonna find such joy in baking something up in your heart in the spirit if you will that's what i saw to give to someone the there's fire in the heart yeah there's fire in the kitchen <laughs> and and really you are you are where that 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 joy is coming from the joy of giving it's yeah. just beautiful what you do for other people you you oh, don't man. even know how much you've encouraged me you know oh. it was uh just over just over a year ago i forget now and samantha first came into our church and first night in, she thought, get me out of here. And mo <laughs> moments later, she was on the floor being delivered. Woo! From that day wow, to now, on. what a beautiful story of redemption. Yeah, come on. <laughs> well, as you, were speak as you were speaking, Wayne, I saw, uh, I saw like a snake in the spirit. And it was, trying, it was trying to speak to you, Samantha. And you just smacked that thing. Yeah. And, uh, and those are the lies of the enemy. Trying to trying to lie or trying to lie about the truth or the word or twist things. That's the snakes too, right? Yeah. And you just smack that thing and it just went flying. And then uh, you walk around and then there'd be snakes speaking to other people. And and you would smack their snakes. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, this one person came up to and they had the snake 
speaking, trying to speak to him. And you told him, you said, if you listen to that snake, you will become the snake. Whoa. Preacher, preach it. Woo. And, uh, 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 and you, and there, they, no, they smacked the snake. <laughs> oh, praise God. Praise Fire God. of God, man. What a vision. Wow. wow. I love you, Samantha. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teared up too. Like, like, yeah, like, yeah. like, uh, Wayne, that is, that is awesome. Uh, what God is doing here today. Mm -hmm. Wow. So Joy good, you guys. So how about, how about one more? How about one more? Sure. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll maybe just close it out here. Um, praise God. What a pro what a broadcast guys, guys, please share this tag. Uh, if you're listening on the replay or, or, uh, I, you know, even people listening on the replay, the anointing is the same because it's the same word. It's the same word. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a message from God. Amen. This is the message from the heart of the father, this program today. Praise so God. good. Um, let's go, uh, Oh, praise God. Miss Cheryl. Miss Cheryl. Let's go, Cheryl. b -Land, bless you. Wow. Yeah, Wayne, if you see anything for her, praise God. Instantly, it's like the Lord showed me a picture of uh, someone um, running down a country, really beautiful country, grass-filled road. And uh, I don't know if you're a runner or not. I don't know that. But um, in the spirit, I see you as a runner, someone who's runner, a forerunner. And uh, forerunners generally end up with uh, um, a lot more opposition um, trying to get you to not run. And the Lord says that you're a forerunner in the spirit. And I, and I see you running and in your hand, you're carrying a baton. It's kind of like, like this, carrying a baton. And I see you running down this incredible, beautiful road with the baton. And the baton is a scroll of the Lord. It's an inside mm. of it. <clears throat> is instructions on on how to defeat the enemy. Wow. And and you're going to run and carry this and how you run and carry it is in the spirit. It's not it's not a natural run. Maybe you are a natural runner, I don't know, but in the spirit you're going to run ahead with the word of the Lord and and declare things. And so what that means to me is that there's intercession that you're called as an intercessor in this in this place of, and that's what intercessors do. They, they're forerunners. They run ahead and they, they clear things out of the way and, and they make sure that the, that when the troops are coming through, that, that they're actually on the right road, that, that they're, they're not taking detours. And, and so um, probably many things have come against your life to, to keep your voice quiet. But the Lord says uh, uh, in, in heaven, your voice resounds. It, it echoes through heaven. And mm. I also see that the Lord has assigned many angels to you, many angels to you. And he wants you to, to um, be aware, to acknowledge that they're running with you. And as you're running along, I see, I see that them, you're, you're actually directing them off to the left and the right to go and prepare. Um, it's like if an army's coming through, it, when it gets there, it needs provision. Mm. Okay. And so I see them, them veering off to the left and the right, and, and they're, they're bringing in provision on this road that you're running so that when the troops get there, there's a refreshing. And so God's called you to be someone, but you have, to, you have to understand that this is why a lot of the opposition has come at you to get you to stop running because then the provision won't be in place for when the troops come through. And so yeah. wow, you're, 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 you are very important and key in in the area that you're at in the in the severe of the kingdom because what you're doing is forerunner stuff and it's not understood forerunners are not usually understood and so it's okay to not be understood on earth but it's you are understood in heaven <laughs> yeah. hey, 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 man huge oh my goodness man i feel like uh, jumping for joy like in the spirit over over that one Wayne. keep running keep running yep amen carry the word of god Amen. One, one more, D uh, Danny. Praise God. Here we go. <laughs> uh, Danny, I, I see a picture of you standing there with uh, one of those. Uh, what do they call them? They, they, they shoot the fire. You know, um, it's like torching the bushes. You know, and, and I a see flamethrower. Flamethrower. Yeah. Thank you. Come on. I see you standing with a spiritual flamethrower, and you know, it's. I see you standing where there's this. It looks like impenetrable bush, but 
you're kind of laughing at it with this flamethrower and there's such a tenaciousness inside of you, such a, a tenacious and that tenaciousness is coming out in the, in the way of fire. And you're, you're just, you won't quit until that, until that, what is stopping people from getting to the next assignment is, is torched out. And, and I don't know, you probably love playing with fire, man. I got so many stories when I was younger playing with fire and dynamite and stuff. And <laughs> as, as you as a person that, that has, just loves that dangerous aspect. Come on, and 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 you won't quit. It's like I see you standing there, just like laughing, ha 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 ha, as the enemies tried to put up this thing to stop the kingdom of God. It's not going to happen because you've got a flamethrower, and that flamethrower is in the Word of God. His word is like a fire in my bones. Okay? If I say I won't speak of him, I, you know. You're not going to be able to, to not speak of him. And yeah. and sometimes in your own flesh, you've been going, I can't, I can't, I can't. People, I, they won't understand. It's okay. His word is like a fire shot up in your bones. And it's actually the word that's going out of you. It's not the flamethrower. It's the word going out of you that is penetrating this darkness in this, this bush that is trying to stop the progression of the kingdom of God. Danny, let the word of God fly from you. I see there's an anointing on the word of God. And it's amazing how many how many times when the anointing of God is on someone's life, how much opposition there is. And so um, in this world, you will have trouble. Be of good cheer. Be happy. I've overcome the world. And so that overcoming word of God is going to bring joy to others, but the Lord wants you to have joy in the middle of the process. And, and this is why the people that come to you that, are, that don't understand, the Lord says, love the hell out of them. Just keep penetrating what's going, those bramble bushes in their own hearts. It's the word of God that's coming out of you that is going to destroy that, that thing that has covered up the glory of God. And so as you speak into the lives of other people, that word of God is that's like fire is going and burning up those things that have tried to cover and hide the, the call of God on their lives. And God's going to use you to bring out that call. And But just understand that when people first get hit with fire, uh, sometimes it's <laughs> uncomfortable. But just keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up because there's much fruit coming. So good. So they'll learn they're made for the fire. Yeah. They'll learn they're made for the fire. You're going to create fire starters everywhere. Yeah. Ooh, come on, brother. <laughs> yeah. Whew, I, I'll tell you, I'm so, I'm so, uh, so thankful to God to be able to, to be able to have you on here, Pastor Wayne today. And, uh, just to be able to just flow together, share, hear your testimony, uh, just, and, and just a little part of your testimony, but the stuff that we, the parts of your testimony you heard today were just absolutely incredible. What God did, how God saved you how God got you uh, into the Holy Spirit <laughs> was awesome. awesome. And then into the ministry. And now, uh, you know, uh, uh, running a, a beautiful church in Nanaimo uh, that, uh, that is just flourishing the, because of, because you got, you're obedient to the Holy Spirit and the people there are obedient to the Holy Spirit. And they're seeing the fruits of that uh, people getting saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, getting into the spirit, growing up into who they are supposed to be in the ministry, in the kingdom. And uh, it's just such a refreshing thing to hear that that's happening on in Canada, mm -hmm. on on uh, on our West Coast. Like that is a huge deal. And also, I, again, I believe a, a blueprint for the nations. What God is what God is doing there at Eagle Mountain Church, uh, Wayne. So so good. Uh, I, I'm going to call you Apostle Wayne because that's that's uh, that's what that's how I see you, and that's how I want to I want to get some of those rewards from you. So I'm, I'm going for the Apostle rewards there. <laughs> well, it has been prophesied many times, and I have accepted it recently with the Lord saying, "Okay, Amen." Okay, well, that's a good confirmation then. That's a good confirmation. That's awesome. And, and, uh, I'm really, really, uh, I would like to be able to do this again. Like I'd be able to like to have you on again in the program in the near future somehow. Cause I think it was so good that, uh, there's so many other things uh, that people need to hear. People need to see on Facebook, uh, uh, what God has done in your life and in the ministry and what has continued to do, because this is like, this stuff is we're moving in like, you're moving in this every day. 
every yeah. every Sunday you guys are moving in this. So yeah. it's huge. Um, so we, we're, we'd love to have you. Thank you for being on here, Wayne. And uh, guys, also tune in because in about – 40 minutes or 40 minutes or so i'm also going to be back with another program with apostle Dwayne from the barn which uh, we were at doing meetings at last weekend at the barn and then a pie pot and then back in medicine hat at the haven and we're going to be talking about a lot of what god did and a lot of the miracles that god did this weekend so uh, you you're going to want to tune in for that it's going to be really exciting as, as well so god god is so good uh god is so good wayne amen thanks for having me I yeah uh, um, and, and so people want to follow you. If people want to, uh, uh, uh follow your ministry, how do they, how do they do that? Wayne, um, support your you ministry. Can, how, how, how do they do that? What's the best way, Facebook, best way to do that? Facebook, Wayne Nelson. Um, you can go to Eagle mountain church.com. You can find out all the information that we have there. Eagle mountain church.com, uh, Wayne Nelson on Facebook and, and we'll just, uh, yeah. Awesome. And from there you, from there you can figure out all the other stuff right on okay well guys do that as soon as you get off go if you're not following him friending him uh tag him maybe send him a message uh share maybe a testimony of how that blessed you today and uh and and uh pour into pour into them and you know i like this you know you so you, you go you go where you sow you go where you so what you sow into is where you're going and uh, where your heart is there your treasures and uh and and guys he's a this is a ministry that uh, you want to sow into you want to follow you want to support you want to get to get to know and uh because it's it's really a, an apostolic heaven sent ministry mm -hmm. so we we receive it at that we receive it as that and honor as that uh as as we honor the father and the son we honor those who god sent and uh and that's you wayne so for my for the fellow eagle brother bald Eagle, Amen. Brother. <laughs> for those, for those intercessors, real. for those intercessors that are watching, Amen. Um, pray for ten thousand souls. Amen. We want, we want people born again. Amen. And the challenge, the challenge. Thirty minutes a day, thirty days. Thirty minutes a day in the Bible, for thirty days, and uh, and and maybe five minutes first thing when you wake up in the morning, just being filled with the presence of God, going into the Spirit to try to see God. Yep. Every day for the next 30 days, too. We'll do, we'll see and next week. yourself. We'll say, God, this day is your day, not mine. Amen. Let's go, guys. I think we could do that. I'm, I'm taking the challenge, I'm going for it, guys, with the Bible thing and uh, that 30 day challenge. Thank you very much, Wayne. God bless you. Love you, brother. And Love we you will see you. See you guys very short. We're going to see you shortly, actually. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to seeing you. Love you all. What a, what a mighty move of God this was. Bless you guys. See you, see you again.